Executive. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the March 27th Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, before we start, I'd like to wish all of those here and those on television a happy Good Friday, a happy Passover, and a, a peaceful Easter. It's an interesting time of year. So, um, with that, we'll open up tonight's uh, agenda with the usual topics. Uh, Selecting liaisons reports, public comment. We'll hear from our town manager. We have uh, a number of discussion items tonight. First is a hearing on water, sewer, and storm water rates. Um, conversation about new resident open house. A change of um, a DBA for restaurant Pavarotti. Um, we'll hear regards the uh, 467 Main Street 40R, that's the uh, former Sunoco station. We'll continue the discussion on Board of Selectmen Policies Article 1, General Operating Procedures, and we'll vote the annual town meeting warrant articles. We have two sets of minutes, and then we will adjourn to executive session um, it, without returning back to uh, uh, general session here. Um, with that, I'll turn to my left for Selectman Liaison Reports. Andrew? I just have uh, a brief liaison report. And um, so the Climate Advisory Committee reports that they're neck deep in lining up exhibitors for the Earth Day Fair, April 21st. Um, they welcome any suggestions on exhibitors. Um, and they're also working on their plastic bag ban rollout. Um, thin, thin plastic bag ban rollout. Um, and they're going to feature the, the plastic bag ban uh, new, new uh, regulations on um, at their, at their um, Earth Day Fair and at Friends and Family Day. On a, just a brief per personal note, um, I, I, I apologize if I'm a little off my game this evening. I, um, I, I lost a very dear, uh, a d a very dear uh, childhood friend. Passed away this, this morning, and he was Sorry. he was only 54. So, so uh, if I'm not totally focused all the time, please please forgive me. Barry, um, nothing to report. I think some a lot of the things will be coming up. Another thing, so I'm good. Very good, John Holden. Uh, yeah. A couple of things. One, I just want to, it's not exactly a liaison report, but it's good news. Um, and that is that the uh, opening day parade for the two little leagues is really kind of picking up ahead of steam. Um, tomorrow there's going to be a, um, we'll be meeting with the DRT to work out some of the final logistics. But um, the, the plan now, based on some recommendations from uh, Deputy Chief Clark, um, the parade will stage in front of the P Performing Arts Center. It'll come up the little hill, it'll go to Dan's house, and then it'll make a left. <laughs> okay. So you don't have far to go. You just put the chairs out front. That's right. All set. Yeah. You could, you know, you're going to have preferred seating. Um, and it's going to make its way all the way around the high school, down to Birch Meadow, down Birch Meadow to Arthur B. Lord, into the service road, and then into the center of Birch Meadow for um, uh, the dedication of the two new um, batting cages that the Little League Baseball organization has donated to the town. Um, and it it promises to be just a great day. I keep, I'm keep i going to keep promoting it because I think it's going to be fun. And Tell us the day. It's the 29th of April. Okay. Um, the parade will step off at about 11 o'clock. And um, by the time we get the Sunday. many participants, it'll probably be about an hour's worth into the um, into Birch Meadow. It won't be a long walk, but um, great possibility we're going to have as many as 700 um, boys and girls uh, that will be marching oh in with their teams. Um, <laughs> we also will be having the the um, Shriners from the Aleppo Shrine are going to be there with clowns and cars and trains and fun, fun stuff. With their Corvettes? And uh, yeah, well, I don't know about the Corvettes, but the we'll Mustangs. See. Yeah. Um, um, we're also going to be having uh, Honor Guard, um, Police and Fire from Reading uh, are going to be participating. And we also, um, uh, it looks like we're going to have bagpipes and drums combined from 
police and fire wow. where some of it's really going to be a great day it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be a cause for great celebration and kind of very traditional um, it's been decades since uh, we've done something like that and you know um, it we originally thought maybe through town, but you know, given the day and the time and the businesses and the parking and where it would end, and the age of some of the yeah, it just made a lot more sense to be yeah. you know keep it contained down there. Good. So you know, you'll hear more about that as we get closer. But uh, I think we're going to get all the final details of that wrapped up uh, tomorrow with the DRT. I'm looking forward to that. Um, the liaison report I have for you is the recreation committee. They've actually met twice. Um, since we were last together uh, I was present for one of those meetings and you know it's they were um, it was prompt you know these this series of meetings was originally prompted by a good problem and that good problem was that um, the girls softball league is really kind of boomed it's you know up near 300 kids which is great um, but it is a you know it did present a scheduling problem because you know We've got those fields have been assigned to previous leagues, and so trying to make the big, the bulge fit um, created some challenges. Um, the meeting I'm going to get am I going to get this right as far as dates are concerned? Um, two weeks ago, no, three weeks ago um, was designed not as a hearing but a public meeting. Um, I think the Recreation Committee did a really good job of, you know, all the butters, interested parties, mm -hmm. you know, promoted the fact that there was going to be a discussion about uh, possibly opening up Birch Meadow on Sunday mornings. And the idea was not necessarily, or the original idea was designed not necessarily around just accommodating the softball situation that, you know, may be short term. Um, but instead opening up all of Birch Meadow on Sunday morning um, and that's kind of the way the meeting started um, there were strong opinions on both sides um, and I think that uh, the opinions were you know interesting and valuable to the discussion um, and I'll, I'm going to consolidate this by saying that um, when all was said and done the thought was maybe a temporary solution rather than a permanent solution was more appropriate. And so to that end, the Recreation Committee <coughs> suggested that maybe they could handle it internally and thought that maybe they could make an exception for this season only um, on a mm -hmm. Sunday morning basis. And they proceeded with a vote um, along those lines. Um, in a matter of days, it became apparent that there was some open questions about procedure. Mm -hmm. um, and to that end, um, I think Bobby recommended to them that they consider meeting and rescinding their vote and mm -hmm. maybe kicking it upstairs to us to deal with. And I thought that that was probably a good idea to that end. They had a meeting um, about 10 days ago, at which time they rescinded that motion and then put together some recommendations for us to consider, I think that these are all in your hands. It turns out, when all said and done, um, that the recommendation is tied to three days, three Sunday mornings, um, and the goal, I think, that both recreation and, I think the goal that recreation had was to accommodate all interested parties, and that is to say, um, the original girls that were on the waiting list after the first meeting were activated. Uh, the teams were in place, so now we had to find a place for them to play. Uh, reality is there was really only three Sundays ever in question right. between Mother's Day and the day of the parade, and, you know, uh, Memorial Day weekend and so forth. The long story short, um, I think that the Recreation Committee heard the um, objection about um, religious services and family time yeah. and wanted to be accommodating um, to that because we've got a long-standing policy. And I think they also wanted to be accommodating to the issue in front of um, Reading girls softball, um, the Little League softball, I should say. 
um, and that is to get them what they needed in order for the girls to have a reasonable season. So um, you're going to hear those tonight. Right, I will. Get that at nine yeah, you'll get those at nine o'clock. I'm telling you this kind of as the liaison. Um, I did announce at the meeting that I went to as soon as I had the first opportunity to speak. I didn't. It was in this room. Um, although I'm the liaison, I did not join the dais. Uh, the chair asked me to, and I said I didn't think it was a good idea because I was going to indicate that I do serve on the board of directors of Reading uh, Little League uh, Softball. And I, at my first opportunity, made that clear to all present in the room and let them know, as I'm going to let all of you know, that when we come to that portion of the meeting, I'm going to be recusing myself from this discussion because of my board involvement okay. um, with the Little League, and I'll be exiting the meeting. So all in all, I, I would just like to say, <clears throat> I think the Recreation Committee took a, a really difficult situation and have come up with some good solutions you know for your discussion good. so that's kind of the end of my report thank you Dan. yes mr chairman uh i'm pleased to report uh that there's been some progress on the rmld payments to reading uh committee front uh, a number of you have attended the uh, meeting of the subcommittee that was held on march 12th uh, mr Pacino presented as a member of that subcommittee a proposal for a, a better way to index the rate that's more predictable and uh, in part relying on a, a fixed factor and part relying on the CPI. That will now go to the R full RMLD board for an official vote so that it's actually going to be a proposal from the RMLD. It is not yet. It is a proposal. Do you know if they're waiting for a response from us before they... Well, I, I told them I didn't think that was appropriate. I okay. thought they, they should nail their end down. Well, of course. Then we have something right. official okay. to discuss. So that will then go back to the... I think they're planning to meet the week of uh, April 3rd after the election. And the next uh, subcommittee meeting will be April 11th. So they will have had a vote. And then the subcommittee right, we're back on the 11th. Right. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. Yes. So they're going to vote on fourth, fifth, or sixth, and, and that. They're going to take it up, and presumably. So they're going to basically vote a proposal. Yes. So it, uh, I guess I'm a little unclear as to why we need a subcommittee. If it's already going to be a proposal, doesn't it have to go to the cab and then back to us? Or is it? I was under the impression that there would there was a proposal given that um, it would go back to the subcommittee. Um, well, it really wasn't a proposal I, yet. I pointed that out to the chair. Uh, that, that's why it didn't go. This back. was an idea. It was presented an as idea. a proposal. Yeah. It's not yet passed, right. passed muster the entire board, so that's the. It purpose. cannot be construed as a right. proposal that, by the RMLD until the RMLD actually adopts it. They I could adopt it, it right. uh, subject to the approval of the CAB. That's one I, way. I thought that. Right. I mean, it's it's yeah. fine. I'd rather get it done and dusted right. sooner yeah. rather than later. Um, so, um, but then also, if the CAB needs to approve it as well, and then they have to advise on it. Yes, that, and, and then they, they do not need to approve it. They need to advise how to proceed. They, they, their approval is a suggestion, okay. strongly considered by the RMLT, but they, they do not. And the CAB represents all the towns, not That's just correct. not just That's Reading. Correct. So, okay, and then it'll come back here sometime mid-April. Dash. Correct. Okay. So it's moving. Okay. I'm pleased to report that. Um, I have no public comment, and with that, I'll open it up. I'm no liaison reports. With that, I'll open it up for public comment, if any. Mr. Brown. Thank you. Michael Brown, 28 Mountain Road. Uh, in view of what Mr. Halsey just said, uh, I think we should be looking into the uh, Memorial Park and getting a definitive answer, yes or no, what we can do down there. I know it's only been a year, but uh, since town council's found this out of mind. But to me, it's pretty clear. And uh, I think it's a good thing because I think you should notify recreation exactly what the what should be done and what cannot be played done. Thank you, Bill. Bob, is there any uh, feedback from town council? I'll have to ask Ray. All right. <coughs> Other public comment? Just stand up, let yeah. us know your name and where you live. Uh, good evening, I'm Mr. Chair, member of the selectmen. I'm Matt Zucker from Reading MKM. So I'm here to update you guys on the Reading Village project going on. We now call it the Metropolitan at Reading Station, so that's what you'll see when we put a banner up eventually. Um, 
So getting out of the ground on any project is always the toughest part. And demo on this one is a tough, I mean that Doucette building and that certainly wood building, especially Doucette is a big building that was leaning over right on property lines. So um, we're in the process of demoing them. There's certainly wood building, I'm sure if you've seen it or haven't, but certainly wood building is down, most of the material is gone. The Doucette building is two thir three quarters down and over the next week to 10 days they'll be removing all that material. Uh, with any construction project, we've had some challenges on some of these issues. We've um, heard, yeah. So, yeah. And so have we. So, I mean, it's in no one's best interest to have issues. So, we're yeah. we're we're on it. I mean, when we have an issue and it causes us a delay, it costs us a lot of money. Sure. So, just to address some of them, so we put them out there. Um, anytime you do demolition, you have to have uh, water control and dust control. Um, there's probably been times. Now we're not there 24 hours a day. I guarantee there's been times the contractor may have not had it on at a certain time, uh, but we have really laid down, laid the law to them and said, look, we, we can't have it, it's unacceptable. You gotta have, make sure your dust control. So they've actually been videotaping it recently because we want to know that it's being done. Um, so once we had an issue with it, we're out there. Now I know when they're spraying, it may look like dust and it may be mist, but you know, we're not perfect, there's gonna be issues. I think there was a gas issue the other day. Ultimately, that wasn't our responsibility. The gas company gave us a letter. There was no gas service. We asked them to go check on it when we were doing uh, cut and cap at the other property, and lo and behold, the gas line is still there. So, you know, again, an issue that came up, there was another issue with a, a water line. So, you know, on construction, I mean, this is the most disruptive part, obviously. Taking those buildings down is uh, quite challenging. I have Matt Roman here tonight from our ownership team. He handles a lot of the daily construction stuff for us as owners. But we do have our general contractor, Bald Hill Builders. And again, we're gonna send out a letter, pass along all our contacts again. So if there is, you know, we want a direct line. So if there's something somebody sees, we wanna know, because it's not in our best interest to have a delay. It's not in our best interest to get, you know, shut down for, you know, 20 minutes. I mean, that cost us money, so uh, it's, I think after we do, um, we hope to start site work sometime middle of April. We're just waiting for, for permits, but that's kind of the time frame going forward. And from there, what we'll do to make a, we'll send to the neighbors just a kind of general schedule so they kind of know where we're at. And then if you want us to come back, we're happy to come update the board um, as we progress in construction. One thing that would be very useful, and we've heard from the community, is um, a piece of paper is is obsolete the minute it's printed. It'd be really helpful to have either your own website or a place we can direct folks to go to that is current with regards to what are the major dates. For example, I think demolition started Monday morning, was it? This week? Uh, the demolition actually started uh, before that. We, the certainly wood building <coughs> came down two weeks ago? Yes. Two weeks ago. But the stop order was on Monday, yesterday? Yeah. Yes, yeah, the taste yeah. Day. Right, so Monday. I don't think the neighbors understood that, the dem that, that it was going to reoccur that day. Part of that's just communication. Yep. Um, yep. You had the permits. It was just a question of. And we did send notice, but right, the no, you know, because so. there was three buildings to take down. Correct. It wasn't a continuous. You know, it wasn't like you just do one, you move to. The I other. get it. There's I get it. Things yeah. we had to do to uh, for the building departments right. for you know other things. So um, because we, we probably didn't communicate when we wrote the letter <clears throat> that the the phasing of the demo wasn't just one big demolition. It was a. Let's well, start a stop. Right. Start a stop. You, you own the schedule, so anything that you tell us is obsolete. I mean, you tell us. So I think it would be helpful is if there was a, a living, breathing website that you literally had the current view of events. Here's the date this is going to happen. Here's the date this is going to happen. And maybe they shift, but you just update the website. Right. And I think it may not be, it, it, there's probably a, a, a groundwork because you don't want to tell someone they always shift, right? If we tell you, you know, right. today's going to be the day we're doing this there. You know, and, and it gets changed to somehow the dick, it gets it. So, I mean, there's a yeah, way plans to plans change. Plans right, no, there's trying to keep the general idea of, right. you know, especially anything that's, you know, disruptive. Mm. I mean, obviously, the demo clearly, and coming out of the room, but the demo clearly taking that to set building, and certainly would, that was, that, that building is right along three property lines. So, I get it. You're going to have know. the same interruptions though when you bring the new, the new materials in. You're going to have all the same right. kind of right. delays and redirection of traffic and parking. And, and, right. and, and people, need, people need to plan. Right. their ins and their outs, their schedules yep. about when it's going to be. Uh, you know, we just can't have our phones ring off the hook because you guys were doing something that nobody knew about. Uh, right. So this is, I mean, right. I, again, I get it. I'm in, I, 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 yep. I, I lend on construction.
construction. I understand this uh, as well as anybody. Um, but this is this is this is now the first step. It's ground one. Any kind of goodwill, any kind of good practice, any kind of great communication will go a long way in making the rest of the project go smoother. So, you know, um, yeah, look, yeah, that that yeah, so that's you know. I, I think people understand that this is a complicated project, um, but you also need to understand that you know th these are people's backyards and their neighborhoods, so, and, uh, and you're going to be here. You're going to be a neighbor. So we got to get this right from the I, first I step. Agree. And it's going to be it's, it's a you know it's a okay. this is the construction right. and a year and a half you know okay. year and a half. Get so we we'll, we'll we'll look into some way like a website or even on our own website to have a that's link fine. That. If you just had a page that's just, just that's try to update it as, as much as possible. Very important. You know. We do do it, you know, everything else is doing it by, you know, whatever the building department requires. And we have a construction management plan, too, just in place. So we, you know, we're, we'll follow, we have to follow that. But the more day-to-day -day impact on somebody's normal routine, right. we need to do a better job of you know, trying to communicate that. So it's not going to make it, that, we're not going to no. get it to zero impact, but we certainly can help no, minimize it um, as we can. Yeah, I, I think yeah, this is a, this has been a lesson learned. So the lesson for us is just help us help you because right. they come to us and say what's going on. We we don't have a clue because we don't have your schedule. And as you said, it changes. So help us help you yeah. get something up there. We can say go to this location. That's the current update. And if something material is going to change, like you've got eighteen wheelers coming in with material or a particular intense day, yeah, advise I know the, the town. Shut down the last two days. Yeah, so I know. Exactly. You know, that I know thing. that's. Yeah, when you wake up in the morning, you see it. Yeah. You know, it, some days we can't, you know, we could do our I get it. Some I get days, it. yeah. Not yeah. yeah. right, Rowan. Um, what, what we could do is we could get any questions or concerns and try and, you know, get those directed right to us or to our builder and then we'd be able to respond quicker rather than, you know. So if by doing this, what we could do is encourage the public the question, the concerns to come to us. It's the other way around. We need you to tell us no, what's going on. I think we could put a web, uh, on our own, on yeah. our new Meadow website, yeah. we yeah. have a page on on right, this project. Right. Our, I think our we could have a, phone, If someone wants to shoot us an email, the question concerns. Yeah, and we can update it as much we'll as, 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 as we can. Your cell phone numbers would help too. So. Yeah, no, that, yeah. I mean, we've, and I think we shared those from the beginning. Okay. So, but that's, it, it also, people do like to go get the information, look at something, Great. kind of see. That, right. It's also probably good to kind of get that information to the town too. So, you know, so Gene knows, or, or, or yeah. Gene, whoever you appoint, you know, yeah. to, to work on this, that, okay, on Tuesday, you know, we're going to see the 18 wheels, or there's going to be steel. To, I mean, wh right. whatever that is, so that yeah, obviously the neighbors are going to know. So, but I think it's important to let. There is a lot them. of communication yeah. back and forth with the town because we're hand in hand with the building department and the police department on when we need police details. I don't think we just have to do a better job. Like we can't just rely that that you know the police knows they're doing a detail. That doesn't mean everyone knows. It, it won't mean it. Road. It won't mean so that they know. You. We go, have to yeah. do a better job. Not the, the, the construction end of it, the communicating just in general of where we're at. You're the only one that knows what you're doing. We can't communicate it. So we really, that's why I'm saying help us help you. Let us know what your schedules are. Maybe on a weekly basis or a, where the major rocks are that you know, I'm going to do this on a Tuesday, this on a Wednesday. And if it changes, it changes. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, well, as I said, I think we could yeah. do a lot better at least okay. on, on the, the, yes, as best as we can. I understand. And, and then with the goal to minimize what the, the goal of that is to minimize the impact because everything else we're following Got it. building department procedures state procedures you know and and so it's more of the impact to the neighbors i feel that we you know has to be communicated better sure. so so just one really quick question if the moon and the stars all align you're saying this is an 18 month no it's like four you know 14. i was just saying I, I guess 14, yeah. 14 15 months okay. um we hope to be done June of 19 okay. and uh, you know we obviously we have a schedule we, we, we love to hit that so we, we give it to you we hope we achieve that so right. I think um, again this is a very challenging part to get I mean if you see that building now it is literally right you know it, there's not much room to move to get those down and uh, but we've con conveyed because we've heard the complaints you got to make sure you, you really and you have to make sure you do it anyways but you know we're in a tight neighborhood any of those things have a more magnified impact here because of that. I understand. You've got to make sure you're on top All right. of it. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. John. Um, if I may, um, you mentioned a, a stop order from yesterday. Could you just tell us uh, the reason for the, the why the stop order was issued? 
I think there are some concerns about dust control. Um, Glenn wasn't in yesterday, so um, there was a stop work order issue. We met with Gene this morning. Um, we really thoroughly went over all the dust control. Um, we have been looking up the dust control. Um, but not yesterday. No, we were right. yesterday. There was, we, were, we were remobilizing the hose from one spot to another. Um, but we have had dust control there every day. Um, so, you know, we were, the job stopped for yesterday, we started back up today and proceeded. Yeah, I think we would, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, confused. I can just jump in. Part yeah, of the please. issue with the, Gene Delios, part of the issue with the construction yesterday was a very windy day. And we were, my office was inundated with complaints. We had six staff people answering emails, answering phone calls. I had a building inspector, not Glenn Redman, but the other inspector, go out and look at it. And he had concerns, so we shut it down. But it was, it was a tough day, so, you know, we actually started yesterday, initially a demo of the Giuseppe building quickly. We switched to go to Brown's Auto to start on that because we, the wind was too much to go okay. to the big building yesterday. So it was weather cooperated. It's it's not all removed, but it's down. Okay, and, and that's a good news. So thank you. Yeah. Other public comment? Yes, in the back. I'm sorry. Yes, Nancy. Uh, Nancy, Dr. Pearl Street. Um, I just wanted to comment later on tonight. You were talking about your volunteer appointment policy, and just for your consideration, one I wanted to support um, your proposal not to re-interview incumbents, and then second, um, I actually think it's unreasonable and, and actually frankly unfair that a five-person board should um, have to have the wealth or scope of knowledge for these interviews when we have so many boards. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm suggesting that is that for each volunteer um, who's applying, the entire board of committee, along with the selecting liaison, uh, conduct the interviews. Uh, these are public meetings. Um, they'll be open to the public. The vote will be taken in those meetings. Uh, the outcome of that will be presented then to the board in terms of their recommendations. Um, you all have liaison, you're all a liaison to certain boards. It seems repetitive to create a two-person volunteer board when you actually all have some better understanding and working of the boards that you sit on. So I'm suggesting that the liaison, along with the entire board, in the interviews and actually vote. I'd like you to consider that later on tonight. That, uh, that topic is actually not in the discussion tonight, Nancy. Uh, it's it's um it's I guess, not. I think I, I guess think a subset think of it, that could be under the mask. It's, it's in our in article. It's in your, article one. Yeah. It's in your agenda. It's, it's in our packet. Part of it's in section one. Part of it's in most section of it's two. In, in article two, but there is a right. section on the right. mask in right. article okay. one. So maybe right. maybe we. We're filing for later information. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, the public comment. Yes. Hi. Um. Prepared a statement, and I got under three minutes. And Mr. Zucker had a long. Um, opening Could you introduce you yourself? Please tell us who you are. I hope you will allow me to, to, to read it all. I'm I'm Cadence Thomas's. I my family owns a house on Arlington Street. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, and I have a brain injury, so this is a lot for me to handle. Um, I am a neighbor of the Reading Village project. I hesitate to call it that because I guess it's called something else now. Um, and I'm here to speak about uh, concerns regarding the site with a focus on the health and safety of my family, my neighbors, and particularly direct abiders who are most impacted by the immediate environmental uh, environment around the site. The developer has submitted plans, achieved approval from town and state. The development is coming. Uh, my concerns are with the implementation of their plans, the safety, that safety measures, state and local regulations, and property law be followed. Uh, two years ago, it's, it's interesting to be in this room now um, with this meeting, um, because two years ago at the initial meeting uh, between the, this board and the developer who's here, um, uh, when members of the community, including myself, asked questions about the impacts the project would have on the neighborhood, the developer answered, don't worry about it, you won't notice. Uh, the chair, you, you responded to this. Um, uh, telling the developer that people, something in this is paraphrasing, uh, but something to the effect of uh, people are expressing real concerns and we expect real answers. 
I am not alone in wondering about real answers. I am not alone in my neighborhood um, that the neighbors um, have been noticing uh, quite a bit about what has happened on the site. Uh, today, uh, 212 through 12 Prescott Street, the Doucette Moving and Storage Building was raised. Um, part of that happened in an unplanned uh, massive collapse. Um, uh, yesterday, the building department put a stop order on the project, citing off unauthorized shutdown of street and violation of the, of the agreement with the town for um, dust mitigation. I have the stop order if you'd like to see it on um, what is written into it. Uh, the police detail that was on site yesterday um, and traffic safety officer Scouten uh, dispute a claim uh, that shutting down the street was in violation. They believe they were authorized to shut down the street. I, I don't know what to make of this discrepancy between two uh, town departments, the police acting in one way and the building department acting in another. Uh, and that is something I have noticed. Um, the dust and lack of adequate management that was occurring yesterday was minor. In, uh, uh, in comparison to what went totally unmitigated today. And in fact, uh, one of the officers on the detail today has a phenomenal video. And I know that he shared it with uh, the Assistant Chief Jackson. And you can see how very much dust went just about everywhere in the neighborhood. The whole neighborhood was dusted um, during the collapse of the building. Um, you, you would imagine it's like holding a garden hose um, to a four-story building. Um, that was not touching any of the dust. So um, I do not know what to make, again, of this discrepancy between the building department, um, uh, the, why they had concern yesterday <coughs> about a, a particular rule about dust, and that that rule is not applied today. The impact on community is unknown. Um, the dust has literally not yet settled. I have concerns about the order of actions taken on this site. Um, a neighbor who has had fencing placed by the developer well within their property line. There are aspects of the safety plan as described to me by Officer Scouten that the developer agreed to, which are not being met. Um, the developer has been able to pre-plan a police detail and yet took no measures to notify the direct abutter on Prescott Street yesterday, like even just to move simply their vehicle that is directly on the line um, because it was then like littered with um, massive amounts of dust and building materials like in excess of one foot in size. Um, from the debris that was falling on their car and on that property. Um, this is one example um, representing a pattern in the lack of communication from the developer to the community. I, in fact, was able to intercept and speak with that neighbor yesterday and say, hey, by the way, do you know your car, when, when they were coming home, they had no idea it's a rental property, and they were totally unaware um, of what was going on. Um, there are DEP filings regarding uh, elevated levels of arsenic and lead on the site. This is, in fact, a waste management, uh, waste site management um, situation. And I believe, based on uh, DEP documentation, that the developer is in violation of state policy regarding um, management of the site. Uh, these are some of the many concerns that I have uh, noticed um, and that are impacting health, safety, and well-being of Reading residents in my neighborhood. I asked the board for assistance in getting beyond the don't worry about it, um, particularly the idea of calling the developer directly from my conversations with um, uh, my neighbors. When they call, it's, a, it's kind of in the realm of, oh yeah, we'll take care of that later, particularly like putting the fence on the pro like beyond the property line, oh yeah, we'll give you that back later. And I'm just not totally sure that that's quite proper. And I, I, I agree, thank you, John, for offering that we that the, the information flow via the other way around. Though it is notable to um, hear the thought pattern and the, the, the mindset of the developer as expressed tonight. Um, so these are some of the concerns that I've had about our health and safety. Um, I asked this board for assistance to get answers. The confusion caused by the different answers from different departments in town, the, the town of Reading, and my neighbors are deserving of real answers. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm asking your name again. Cadence, Cadence Thomas. Thomas. Cadence, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so you, you, this is just one subset, and it's, yeah, yeah, I mean that, you, you don't need to respond. I'm just saying I, this is I, what I, I know. Record, there's a lot of things. I mean, clearly, there's. I, I just need to, There's a lot of points she made on the record that I, I really disagree with. I understand. But ultimately, we have to do a better job communicating. Perception is reality. And, Perception and is reality. It is an impact, and I would never say these projects never impact the okay. neighborhood because that is. You know, we, we understand. We, it, we take it to heart those those type of comments. So we'll certainly. <laughs> regroup on the communication and, and come up with a you know, suggestion on something on the website to be able to 
Bob, yeah. before we do that, Bob, what's the, what role does the town have in terms of, I don't say enforcing, but kind of providing the supervision of the site as things are going down, at least as it relates to Is there one individual in charge of that? Though? Well, police for public safety. But they, they're basically, it's a public safety yeah. focus, not the... No other role. This no other is role. a public health issue. Yeah, we're not well, there this managing is a, this the This is a private you know, matter in it a lot is. of ways. I mean, I just, John, if, if I could just quickly, yeah. Barry. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, was there an uncontrolled collapse of the building today, or partially? So when you demolish a building, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it, inherently it's not, you know, the, you know, it's controlled as tearing down a building, mm -hmm. you know, a hundred plus year old building mm -hmm. can be. Um, you know, when we did pre-inspections with the DEP um, for asbestos and other hazardous material, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about that. We talked about you do the best you can with dust control. We're using, you know, we're using four-inch hose. Um, there will be dust. That's why the, you know, that's why things are, uh, you know, we, we do uh, um, remediation prior to it. Um, but you're never going to be able to take down a building without having any dust. You just, right. You know, and um, has all the asbestos been removed from yes. the building? Yep. They couldn't have gotten the demo circle right. out of the state. And, and, and MDP was on site, inspected. <coughs> Okay. I think four hours one day to make sure made us actually retest a few more things. So they have we have been working hand in hand with them, and yeah. then we do have you know soils and we're, we're completely complying with everything. We're not in violation of everything. You put a notice out. A lot of that site was urban fill, so when they built it, late, you know when they brought in fill back then, uh, their standard process was just bringing whatever it is. Well, and yeah. so some of that oh. fill has like ash in it. Um, there was no uh, contamination. At, um, from the auto body, there was like a small little area that we, we removed that was in actually the auto body that was from the work, but there was no leaks, no oil, and you know, uh, no. So all of it is just uh, urban fill, which has some higher levels. So when you dispose of it, you do it under a program through DEP, and you have your licensed uh, site pro uh, professional engineer, uh, you know, actually go in there sampling everything. So it's a very very regulated process. I, I know it yeah. quite well. <laughs> um, did, did you provide um, Mass DEP? I didn't notice this on our website uh, last night um, with a health and safety plan uh, because it's a hazardous waste site. It's not a hazardous waste site. So yeah. it, 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 it's listed there, as one. There's there's levels there you know there's uh, levels that in the soil that you know have to go to certain facilities. So we haven't categorized all our soil. Yet. We're still in the process of that. You have a our, uh, release tracking number right. and, no, right. and so, a notice right. of responsibility for a hazardous release. You have or to ha submit the plan to right. DEP. So it is a hazardous waste site yeah. and and. Um, and did you submit a health and safety plan to the Mass DEP uh, for potential to control, the, you know, to protect the public health and safety uh, with regards to contaminated soil? You, you, I mean, prior to the site work, because what we needed to do was actually take down the building so we could test the soil under there. Right. Until we test that, we don't have a picture of what we have on the site. So what we did before we took the buildings down, we did as many tests as possible on that site. Mm -hmm. Got the analyticals back uh, about a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And now we need about eight more holes so that we can categorize the whole site. And then you submit um, your, right. your, respond, your RAO and, and all that stuff. Um, right, it's called, that. yeah, Permanent right. Solution. But d d so your LSB felt that the, the, the demolition would not entrain any um, contaminated soils at the site, yeah, which is kind of hard to say because you haven't really fully characterized your nature and extent of the well, contamination. He's actually, right? because the buildings were built so long ago, yeah. um, that he's actually very confident that the soil under the buildings is good. The Doucette building actually has a base, uh, it had a basement in it, a small little mm -hmm. area. So he's, um, it, it, it just to, for to know 100%, we have to do the test, but he's very confident that that soil is actually good soil. We have a pretty good categorization of what, what the whole site looks like based on the holes we have now. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm just asking yeah. for the, yeah. you know, okay. because I want to make sure the dust isn't contaminated. Correct. Uh, right. Yeah. All right, thanks. I'm going to move on only for the uh, for the hour. Any other public comment? 
All right. Um, do you want to do these approvals with the folks yeah, here? I do. I do. Let me get to it. Um, we have a couple of uh, proclamations and recognitions tonight. Um, first, I want to uh, recognize uh, a, a real success story in the town of Reading, uh, Friends of Reading Recreation, which is a uh, private organization dedicated to the improvement of leisure and recreation in the town of Reading. Uh, it was founded in 2006 by uh, Pete Commodorus, who presently serves as the group's president. And we're here tonight to um, uh, remember and actually commendate uh, three members of that group for uh, their contributions to the middle school uh, cross-country uh, activity. Uh, Dan, would you mind reading one of these? Yes, I'll, I'll sort of uh, combine the three here. Uh, these are certificate, move to uh, issue certificates of recognition to the following individuals, assistant coach Kathy Kinney, head coach Dan Princick, and assistant coach Chris Rotundo, uh, the Friends of Reading Recreation, who have been instrumental in advancing the FORR Middle School Cross Country Team Program. That's the same for all, I think. And its advancement uh, to the state and national championship and the junior Olympics levels. And for your ignition and encouragement of, of a love of distance running in all young athletes with a focus on self-improvement and always giving a best effort. Thank you, Dan. Um, uh, Do I second it? Yeah, we have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? 5-0. Reading is blessed to have volunteers like uh, the uh, members and officers of Friends of Reading Recreation. Uh, they're a small part of what makes the fabric of Reading special. So we do want to recognize three individuals. Are there representatives here that can come forward? Why don't you come up, just introduce yourself. John Arena, Dan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Thank you for coming out to the Billy City. Congratulations. So, uh, do you guys mind if we get a, a photo? Sure. Is Kathy Kinney here tonight? or? She may not. Okay. That's great. Well, we'll trust her. Oh, go right ahead. She'll come in with two wheels. Okay. Step over. Over the middle. Do that in somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Well behind two eagles. Yes, please. Okay, we have also two uh, certificates of recognition for uh, two new Eagle Scouts in Reading, and I would like to move to uh, approve certificates of recognition to Benjamin J. House and Brian W. Doucette. Uh, they are different. They are citations. Yeah, yes, I, I, I think I'll read both. Uh, Benjamin, in recognition of his achieving the Eagle Scout Award for his leadership project, in which he compiled. 72 care packages to send to soldiers currently serving overseas. He specifically collected donations of food and toiletries as well as monetary donations and sent them to soldiers who normally do not receive packages from friends or family. Brian Doucette, in recognition of his achieving the Eagle Scout Award for his leadership project, in which he greatly contributed to the maintenance of the Pine Vale Conservation Area. His work included designing and constructing a conservation sign at the Center Avenue site, as well as squaring and resurfacing the parking lot with new gravel at the Pine Vale Street entrance. Okay. So move. Okay, I have a motion. Uh, second. second. Um, any further discussion? No. Seeing none, all those in favor? Andrew? Sorry. Recipients here this year? No, we're going to have a court of honor. April 7th yeah. is their so court of honor. Our trustees to the usual. Uh, Barry will be yeah. uh, making that presentation. This, I think, is the ninth, eighth or ninth Eagle Scout yeah. in the last 90 days. Just as a sidebar, hmm. um, I share this when I visit at the troops, and Barry's heard this before, but um, Reading is known in the Greater Boston Area Council. It's called the Spirit of Adventure Council, uh, as the Eagle's Nest. 
because we have now for 11 years produced more Eagle Scouts than any of the other 71 communities including Boston and you know large cities um, it's uh, Reading's a place you it's okay to be a Boy Scout it's kind of cool I, I think it's I think it's really awesome um, we have another Eagle Scout in the room tonight <laughs> Mr. Connor. So we're fighting about our weight class. They're, they're yeah. about. Bunch and above our class. Yeah. Very so good. it is uh, notable, and um, yeah. and I and I was advised last night that uh, another young man in this same troop uh, passed his Eagle Scout for, um, board of review last week. So we'll have another one of these coming. Very good. Um, I apologize for a little bit behind schedule, but I'll turn to the town manager for his update. Just a couple things. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, first and foremost, uh, earlier this evening we had a, a potential hazmat situation on 30 Haven. The area was shut down. It's all been cleared. There's no hazardous situation. Uh, thanks to the police and fire and the hazmat team, though, that responded very quickly. Uh, secondly, this is now available. This is the uh, annual town meeting booklet. Um, it's over at the police station. The town clerk will send out emails. And uh, after the election next week, we'll send out uh, U.S. mail to the uh, newly elected town meeting members. Uh, but that is available as requested, um, you know, in advance of the election and the override question in particular. Um, thanks to Matt and Jean in my absence in the last week, um, not too many buildings fell down, so that was good. <laughs> Apparently there was two. The other, the other one was uh, also a planned demolition. And, uh, and lastly, and, and importantly, um, in terms of the building security project that I know this board has met in executive session last fall, uh, we're able to secure a spot on the uh, latest bond bill for three million dollars mm -hmm. of that project of that four million dollar project that's a long way from being funded but it's a very good start so um, both the house and the senate are likely to approve <coughs> that in the current budget process and then again you know then you then you're on the list and you get funded when you get funded but at least that's uh, that's a really good start so but what's like this, thank our this is Hill. for what the, the building security study oh, was executive session one executive session on it right i didn't realize that that would be funded by the state yeah, um, we had a window of opportunity for 15 minutes and didn't miss it Sweet. frankly Sweet. so you know, that, that's, that's, that's not immediate that's not you know mm -hmm. you know cash on the barrel it's just another option uh, that would help us greatly if it came through so, in six so months. would that be a, like a, a interest-free loan from the state or just grant. Be a grant grant wow. mm -hmm. we'd have to fund it if we wanted to do it sooner and then be reimbursed kind of like uh, no I don't think it would work that way it's um, you know if you want to do anything on your own you're welcome to if you want to get the grant and spend it under their terms you can do it that way also uh -huh. generally speaking as, as it was presented to you the building security has different phases to it right uh, the capital plan has one explicit phase for next year the dispatch center and then there's another four odd million <coughs> after that frankly to be planned as the funding becomes available okay so so we'll it see. could be not something we have to use our own resources exactly for, potentially and we can stay and we can stage the development of, of how we do it based and on you know quite unfortunately this is a topic that um, does get a lot of support now so right now as it should yeah bob you mentioned that original plan was broken up into tranches and i think the first one was in the order of a million a million two something on that order. It, it's really hard to say um the one thing that I, that I will say publicly that we decided as a group and when i say we i mean um, superintendent of schools myself facilities director police chief primarily is that we could not in good conscience uh, work on a single school at a time that it had to be all schools or no schools right, right. Uh, you couldn't favor a school where i was going with this is if, if the grant is three and the overall project is more than three you could you could while not jeopardizing the grants spend the, your monies first up certainly until, absolutely yes um okay i'm quite sure whatever number was identified four odd million you could find six million of improvements to make so absolutely we could uh, spend any money the town would be willing to spend or the state would be willing to give us so more to the point would, would we proceed on the project anticipating the grant i don't right now as i sit here i don't know of a million dollars for instance other than the dispatch center there would be such a high priority that we would just do that got it and then wait for the grant got it all right okay. thank you that's all thank you and that frees up other things we can put back that we potentially did capital plan yeah. Yeah. quick quick question on the status of the south main street funding i understand the town has been uh, promised four million to do south main is that true oh well, we haven't been promised any money just that the oh. state will do it state will do the it. state will okay. do the work I, don't, I think that's um, been understated. We should uh, 
Okay. Take some pride in that. Yeah, and um, that would uh, begin, Andy was there for most of the meeting. Yeah. That would begin probably, it has to be done by October 1st. Okay. It would be probably late summer, I believe, is when they said it would start. And it would be Main Street from, from tip to tip, mm -hmm. with the yep. exception of the town-owned stuff in the middle by the, by the train tracks to 129. Okay. So both ends. And uh, after driving it yesterday, after my return, it greatly needs it. It's, it's been quite a bit worse just in two weeks. Was it the Italian roads that were worse, or was it the, was the, it Italian, really the Italian roads and the drivers were great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, it's hard to have an accident when you're driving really fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Um, let's see. Next on the agenda is um, the um, water and sewer. Yeah, water and sewer yeah, here. I, I did see a legal notice. So I'll simply declare the hearing open on setting the fiscal 17 water sewer and storm water rate. <clears throat> okay. uh, a month ago, last uh, your last meeting was canceled due to snow. But, um, a month ago, I gave you a pretty lengthy preview so we could do it more quickly. Uh, very little has changed in water and sewer. The MWRA has refined their estimates, so I've made some slight changes, but it doesn't really uh, cause any great differences versus my initial presentation. FY19 budgets in water and sewer are up about 2.5%, as you can see here, 2.4, 2.8. Um, the green numbers are things we have more control over. The white number is something that's an MWRA controlled number. So you can see that we are able to spend more capital when the MWRA assessment is low. When the MWRA assessment is high, for instance, in sewer, we just had a cut back on capital. So mm -hmm. we try to work with what we're given from the MWRA. Um, <clears throat> the economic development and the growth in population is um, is a good thing for water and sewer rates. It's going to decrease the net impact on rates by almost 4% because we're selling more water. Okay. Um, should go without saying. No changes in collection policies. The three and three quarters rate is good. Um, we do have a number of people that, that prefer to lean this to their tax bill. Whether they'll still do that with tax reform, I don't, I don't know. Bob, say, I'm sorry, can say, you say, say that, that again? Um, if you don't pay your water and sewer bills, okay. eventually town, the town with a high interest rate will put it on your real estate bill. Real estate uh, bills are deductible. If the IRS looked really closely and saw it was water and sewer, it is not. But that's what some so, people do. So people generally, uh, I mean, uh, that's a very suspect. Yeah. So people, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it, sir. So people no, purposely no, don't pay the water and sewer just so, so that you, so so that you can ding them. Uh, and, they can, and, 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 and they write it off of their property tax check rather yep. than their. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> well, the collection no. method is to move it to the property tax because you got to pay property well, tax. What, right. rate, what rate interest uh, are they paying? And, you know, it's the theory is 16, that they're yeah. able to deduct. So what happens first? We, 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 you know, we do a property tax taking or we shut off the water. I mean, we almost never shut off the water. Well, I know. I, I'm making kind of a yeah, joke, but yeah. it, it's. I know. Well, it, because it's adding to the property tax at 14 percent. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's a very convoluted financial uh, uh, transaction it, it, that goes on, and you, you know. I, I think it's just easy to pay the bill when you get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there is that idea. <laughs> if the world were only that simple. <laughs> um, I really think that when people do that at their own peril. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, yeah. I'm sure the IRS, um, if they get a sharp pencil, are not going to be thrilled with that one. Plus, the, t the change in the tax law is going to make it yeah. almost a moot point. You would. Um, reserves are extremely healthy in water and sewer, between four and five million. Um, I think I mentioned that this, if this were the general fund, you would be looking at a free cash of 80 to 100 million by comparison. Wow. So that's how healthy these funds are. So you can use reserves. Right. Um, I changed it a little and just went with percents instead of amounts. Uh, if you don't use reserves in water, you're going to see an 8% increase. If you use the same amount of reserves as is currently being used, you're going to see a very small increase, less than a percent. I've given you an option if you want to keep the price the same of using a little bit more reserves, and that's water. Sewer is very similar. No reserves, almost eight, up 8 percent. Same amount of reserves, a small increase, even lower than water. And I've given you the option if you don't want to change prices, use a little bit more, another 25000 If you do that, you'll fall off the cliff eventually, right? Um, I don't think that's a high enough cliff to worry about it. If you if you went up to the 125 percent numbers, yeah. I think that's too high of a cliff. It, it appears that that no change is really mar a marginal change in actual dollars. Is that true? Uh, it's no change in the rate. I know, but what I'm saying is, you, 
So you do need to use slightly more reserves than you're using in the current year. By so 25. I guess my question is, in in the big picture of how much reserve is there, it's not as though you're eating a, a no. in order to be able to keep people at a level cost. Right. Um, you know the. the Differential, the delta is really not very large. Yeah, I, I would not express any concern at all in you leaving rates the same and using slightly more reserves. Yeah. I just told I mean, you. Basically, it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's ten, using 10% of the reserves. That, yeah. that's, that's akin right. to using a million dollars of free cash right. in a budget, So, which we do all the time. Yes. Yeah. So, so, and I think it's, right. oh, sorry, it's okay. consistent yeah. with what the financial policies are. Exactly. Uh, do, you, do you have a, an average water consumer figure uh, as to what the uh, the none would be in dollars versus the use 125 percent. I don't. I let me think about it while I do the rest of the presentation. Okay. It's 20 bucks or something like that. Well, it's only per year. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, and here's somewhat of a history on water and sewer uh, rates. Again, you eliminated the discount here, the 10 percent discount. So that's artificial. It's really a three percent increase. But um, you know, other than that 11% increase, um, increase have been very reasonable. We usually target three to five in capital planning and budget planning. So this is, this is a good year. But primarily because of the sale of more water. That's the yes. magic and all that. Yes, so much like the usage penalty was a one-time thing, right. the usage benefit is probably a one-time thing. Right. But again, there's 16 projects out there. So it may so be a two-time so thing. So, so potentially, Nick, yeah. I mean, next year, we could see one either or two more years. You'll see another dip. Another dip, in which case, and maybe it could go down a little bit, or stay mm -hmm. the same for a few more years. And could be, you know. Um, and the wild card, as always, is what's the MWRA's forecast? And mm -hmm. um, you know, they right. they dictate 33 and 76 percent of the cost of the two funds that uh, right. the town runs. Mm -hmm. But aren't there a lot of aren't a lot of their capital costs already done? Like Deer Island is done. I mean, they're always doing um, stuff, but I know. would say sewer, yes, water. So so 50 50 okay. and they've done a really good job and constantly refinanced so they've actually extricated themselves from a lot of costs okay. they um, actually are pretty well managed very well yeah managed. they are very well the numbers managed. on that table bob for fy 20 through 22 those are the raw numbers without any reserves true uh no these are uh <coughs> assuming similar levels of reserves so you'd really have to goose it in 20 to smooth that out for example the 4.7 yes, yeah, and this is again this number here, this 8.3. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but I know it's a big uh, expectation of a MWA sewer increase, uh, sewer charge increase. And the demand on which this is based is the FY17 demand. Correct. Um, now I'm going to switch gears quite a bit and talk about stormwater in a little more detail than I did with you last time. You made me really stop and think about a few things. First time. The. Um, $160,000 increase in the fund is largely uh, due to a capital, couple of capital projects. Um, there's a $250,000 Sturgis Park project and $100,000 in the downtown infrastructure assessment that we've discussed are shared. And as background, there's a possible, you know, another $9 million of capital in this fund. The first two, I would say, are very important. Well, the first one is very important. We know about it. The second one, we don't know. That's why we're doing a, an assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one has always been some question as to whether the town proceeds or not. And um, my only reservation in proceeding is that if other towns on the Ipswich do not do the same thing, we're spending our money at minimal benefit right. for the river itself, right. quite honestly. And then we don't know what future stormwater regulations still might uh, bring on us. Um, it's important to stop here and tell you that reserves are not generated by usage. So water, you use more water, you sell more water, all of a sudden you've got reserves. Same with sewer. Um, storm water is a, is a fixed fee per household, so if you build a new house, you get more. Um, but if you renovate your house, it doesn't make any difference. Um, if you renovate a commercial space, it's probably not going to make any difference unless you change the uh, impervious sur surface. What does it mean collections are unexpectedly strong if it's um, a standard $40 charge? You know, only because of the things I just mentioned. If there's some kind of development of an empty lot, oh, I see. incremental lot, that's the only way. Okay. Um, the current reserves are even higher in storm water than in water and sewer on a relative basis, and I'll show you that. But that's because we didn't spend money for a couple of years in capital. We had a bottleneck in engineering and TPW, and we've solved that by planning out these specific projects right. instead of leaving generic work out there. So right now what I'm saying is reserve use um, 
seems infinite, it's not nearly as reliable in the future as water and sewer will be for it to, for it to continue to be there. I thought it would be helpful for you to look at how the $40 household fee is actually broken down by components. So for the current year, it's $10 of wages, 12 of expenses, 9 of general fund support that pays a certain amount of, of my salary, 25 in capital, and then 3 in this reserve for collections. So that's $59. We <coughs> offset it by using reserves, $19 worth to bring it down to $40. But was it always 40 or did we, did, did, was um, that it, lower I think we it's changed, changed it? twice. I think it went down and then it went back up to where it was. Okay. So I think it may have gone from 40 to 36 to 40 or something like <laughs> that. Yeah. It, it did. Hmm? It, it did. Okay. <laughs> I know that very well. <laughs> so it was always in that, in that 40. I, I remember we got more complaints when it went to 36 yeah. than back to 40. Bob, could you explain the per unit calculation for the stormwater? Uh, it's just um, not as well as, as our GIS coordinator, but yep. um, there's some intense calculations done, and to be simple, the town decided to treat all single family homes the same, as if okay. everyone had the same size lot, right. same impervious mm -hmm. surface, Make just it easy. easier. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the commercial rates are based off the average single family lot okay. at this many dollars, is then done a real calculation on all commercial property. And other towns that have modeled storm waters after us, um, very few have done it that way. I know Milton, where uh, some of my family lives, has done a much more complex solution, and they're realizing that ours is just so simple to do. <clears throat> For the uh, look ahead, if you want to look at that same wage, expense, so and so forth breakdown, again, you can see this year we're actually slightly below $40. Next year is $76 because there's some one-time capital that's high in FY20 and the future. We don't know what the capital expenses are because I showed you $9 million. I only know one of those million needs to be done. I don't know about the other $8 million, so we have to have some planning, but we can't know for sure. Just looking at these bottom lines, you see a, an FY19 is somewhat of a one-time larger increase that dips down in 20. But then if you take on those river projects, mm -hmm. you know, you're right. looking at a much bigger cost. So previously, um, I had suggested that um, you could, it's not impossible at all to keep a $40 rate for next year and use $36 of reserves. Um, you know, that's about 350000 there's about 900,000 reserves, it's not a, a big problem. That's a little. But the more I thought about some of the comments the board ma made, it didn't really seem like a best practice to do that, use up so many reserves, and then really have to jack up the yep. price right. in future years. Um, I've, I've, again, I've talked about some of the capital costs. Um, you know, we, we've been using a policy. I know that they're not necessarily analogous, but um, FinCom has been using a policy that's a you know, about a 10% of reserves. Yeah. In more or less. Back, yeah. You know, it's a little more than that, actually. Yeah. And it seems to be working. It, it almost, and I, you know, I realize these are not exactly analogous, but um, I mean, should we be thinking in that direction? In your, well, in your opinion. Um. Yes, but it's a little more complex. You have to first say. What's the amount of reserves you should hold regardless? So that's untouchable reserves. And um, you know, FinCom has now raised that to 7%. It used to be right. 5%. So the amount of surplus reserves right now are only three or four million. And they're using a million. So they're really using 25% of what you describe as surplus. Discretionary. So I would agree with you totally looking at it that way. I don't know what that number is in stormwater. I've said somewhere between two and 300,000. What is the rainy day that the reserves are there for? Um, a problem, an unexpected problem. So storm water, all of a sudden, there is a big flood somewhere, and you have to fix it. So more like a cap, like a big yeah, capital expense. A big capital yeah. expense. Yeah, okay. absolutely. It's just capital. There shouldn't be any other unexpected right. Right. situation. Right. Same with water. Same with sewer. Can you back up a slide? Yeah. yeah. So the estimated one million economic development. Do you have a bogey in your head for? Uh, that, that's just the <coughs> estimation of the infrastructure, right? That's again. I, I mentioned uh, as early as last November town meeting. We had four different uh, estimates right. for the four different funds. Right. I have no idea what this may cost. I just had a plan it. So I've said a million. Um, I'll give you an offset to some of the work we're doing in one of the projects we've set aside and FinCom has already voted. 
um, it'll ultimately be up to town meeting to move 100,000 out of stormwater reserves to, to cover a certain possible cost in one project. So a million is probably too much, but it's a good place. Yeah, Some sorry, more? Could, you, could you just read the last sentence of that slide, Bob? This one or the? It, I'll, I'll be the one before it. The in increase to an $80 rate. Yeah, back here. Um, you're going to need to go to eighty dollars if you want to mm. use the more typical hundred and fifty thousand dollar reserve uh, level. Mm. That's these numbers can cost you eighty plus. Per if you do nothing to you do nothing yeah. else and you have the reserves to use as you're using them today. So it may be better to phase, you know, instead of that, going from forty to eighty, phase it. So know. that's you know, here's exactly. here's the else, here's the possibilities. You you leave it at forty, you use three fifty. Yeah. Um, you jump to 60 and you use only 175,000, which is more consistent with the level we've been using right. for some time, 200 this year. Or you go to 80 right away and you're cut reserves almost to no use. You could do so that, but it's not, a, not necessary. Are we five years out to 80? No, I'd say you're three. Right. If you do Two nothing. to three. Depends what you do. If you jump in now. What are we going to find on economic development? Don't know. What let's, are the let's say we find less than a million. Then maybe a three to four years out on those river projects are things we don't know about today. Do the, do the economic, I mean, sort of doing the economic development project, does that add to reserves? Because now we're being able to assess yeah. projects that weren't there. So Depending on what the project the, these, does, yes. These, these may or may not generate, I mean, they may not generate like, like free cash might, but they'll regenerate something. They will regenerate something, but not nearly in the order of new, new growth does to taxes. But okay. something, yes. Yeah. So. I think that um, if the jumps are too dramatic, you know, people right. will have a really hard time understanding. Agreed, I right. think you gotta. I think you have to start yeah. making the move, yeah. kind of rather immediately there, so that people have a comfort level and your reserves are maintained. I mean, right. you, you don't know what you're going to get back in reserves. That's the problem. Right. I mean, it, right. this is a place where it's very different from what's going on with FinCom and the, you know. Yeah. This is why we brought it up two weeks yeah. ago, that should we lean a little bit more into the storm yeah. water and maybe take the edge off to 2021, 2022. I, I agree, and, and there's a, there's at least a reasonable possibility that you can leave it at 60 for quite some time exactly. if we don't find any real problems. You don't want to go, you don't want to go to 80 and then say, oh, we didn't need it, now we go back to 40. And or it, no. it just, it, you want it, you want it at least. Well, does it make it, sense, though, to jump, to make a 50% jump? when you know maybe the right move is to go to 50 then go to 60. i'd go to 60 just because it's easier to divide into quarters yeah you need to have it in quarters <laughs> right yeah I, okay i get that mr brown uh i would be very cautious of raising the fee based on the case down in sagas where the supreme court said that its fee is voluntary if you mandate it it is not a fee it is a tax and that was recently down in uh, town Sawyer's. Recently, more than 10 years ago. No. No. When? About five years ago. I think it was longer than that. But I'll, I'll go home and look it up. It was in your original discussion. I'll, I'll go home and look it up. I'll bring it in for you more. So, so, so going from forty to sixty, that's a that that that's not a rate. That's an actual dollar. So basically, five dollars a quarter. We're adding, we're adding twenty dollars a year. Right. You know, assuming the I mean, I know there's no average water bill, but not raising the not raising the water and sewer bill oh. and, and the average. How much is that actually? Yeah, yes. Well, if we earlier. raised it like five percent, like we normally do, how much would that have added? Yeah, One hundred and fifty bucks a year. It's, it's 2 a.m. right now. His jet lag is about to kick in. Oh. So. No, it's actually 4 a.m. So I just caution so you. are just getting up now. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> you could actually uh, call Mrs. Salsley. She's a water bill I song. <laughs> I think um, I'm just looking, thinking of my own water bill, water sewer bill. You know, 1500 to 2000 bucks a year. We'll call it 1600 5% uh, increase is 80 bucks. 5% is a typical right. long term. So save 80, pay 20. So save 80, still saving 60. 20. Yeah. I mean, well, the goal yeah, here. Yeah, they really, they, those dots don't really connect. Yeah. I, I mean, I get what you're saying. Right. Because it's money. But I don't, you know, if you're not raising and making the case that the not raising saves you 80, um, and therefore, you know, adding 20. 
Yeah, but they're, yeah, but they're, these are two. Separate, <laughs> it's just, customers it, not going to see. At you. the end of the day, people will write one check. But the thing is, these are two separate kinds of things with two right. separate kinds of yeah. uh, determinations of what creates the need and, and the cost. So, you know. Uh, well, the, you know, there's optics, and then there's doing the yeah. thing the right way. I mean, this seems like it needs to be moved, and it does seem to make sense to hold the line on, on, the, on the, water the water and sewer. sewer. Yeah. So, and that just seems like it's the right yeah. thing to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, could you talk a little bit about the philosophy of how the uh, minimum billing rates are set? How do um, we go about that? I, I really can't speak to the philosophy, only the mechanics of double the rate. And that's a typical uh, thing that's done in the Commonwealth. So if your rate is uh, $10 for water yeah. per 100 cubic feet, um, the minimum bill is 20 per quarter per bill. I, I can't. I'm sure there's a reason why that historically started in the Commonwealth, but I don't know what it is, honestly. It's two clicks or whatever the bill is, right? Yeah. yeah you know, another, hmm. we're due for new water meters in three or four years. We've been waiting to see what North Reading does. It's another <laughs> story. Um, as a consumer, I'm not real thrilled with my water bill because it's so imprecise. Yeah. It has such a large variance. variance. Right. I would like much more precision. Now, maybe that's unrealistic. I don't know. Okay. Um, but that's, it's just double the, uh, you know, every quarter it has a minimum quarterly bill of double the rate, as if you've used 200 cubic right. feet. Bill, um, could, I, could, I, could I ask a follow-up question to Bill, to your point, Bill? I, I want to make sure I understand it. Um, you're saying we, you don't think we should raise the the fee for stormwater because it's a it's not a tax and therefore it's voluntary. If your fee must be voluntary. You are taxing me because I'm paying it involuntarily. So therefore, it is a tax. So so whether we keep it the same or raise it. How does that make it any more uh, legal in, in from your it point of view? It just takes a little back and forth or not. I see. Okay. Thank I you. Within one week of getting a decision from the United States Supreme Court. Hey, you got to have something to keep you busy, Bill. Bob, <laughs> <Yeah, that's right. laughs> uh, while, while we're talking about water, Bob, uh, Bob um, where does the subject of double meters come into this? We talked about it. I know it's not on the agenda tonight, but when, when, when could we bring it back before? Bring it back anytime you'd like. We probably want DPW here and have a little advance notice. So that would be helpful. Uh, you know, again, in terms of uh, sort of, if you pardon bad comparison, uh, it's like the split tax rate. It's not going to create water use. It's just going to divide up the pies. That Agreed, but it's more. Yeah. The equities are are more accurate. If you use it, you're getting charged for it. If you don't use it, you're not getting charged for it. So. That's a little different because it's a use space. Not but then there's a, not a question tax. of how do we charge sewer because we charge sewer based on water. So that's why right. DPW. I get it. I get it. Right. Okay, that's all I have. So the, what's the sentiment of the board? I mean, it feels like just listening to folks that um, <coughs> using a bit more reserves and having no change in water and sewer mm -hmm. and boosting the stormwater to 60 is prudent. Is that no, the consensus? I agree. That's what I would make a sure. motion for. That's that's where I am. What are the numbers here? Uh, so. Um, on your list of motions, it's actually the FY18 water rate at ten dollars per hundred cubic feet, with a minimum quarterly bill of twenty dollars. Oh, so this is eighteen, not nineteen. We're doing. Yeah. In the middle of eighteen. Well, is it? Okay. <laughs> I'll go with that. It's it's not really any fiscal year. It's half and half. I'll go with nineteen. Yeah. So these will be immediate. So un so unlike our taxes. Next, next December. So this doesn't happen July 1? No. So this is... The well, it happens in December, but your usage, depending on your meter, could have, could have been begun in August. Right. So it's tail end of summer usage. Okay. The bill comes out in November. You have to pay it by December. Right. So, so it's 19... The FY19 rate at 10 per 100, minimum of 20 for yep. water. Oh, 10 per 100, okay. $10.17 and yeah. per 100 for sewer. Minimum twenty point thirty four, okay. and then storm water um, sixty sixty. So move to set the FY. Uh, well, <coughs> well, we have to listen to the public. Yeah, any public comment? Area. Any other public comment? I should say, Mr. Brown. Uh, why are you doubling the both fees? You're only reading it once. Why are we doubling both no. fees? I don't understand. Yeah, water and sewer. Oh, for the minimum. 
but you're only reading it once. Why has it cost it twice? I think what we heard moments ago is that general practice has been to, to set it at 2x, the minimum of yeah, the fee for 100 cubic feet. That, but you're still reading it only once. Why, why do we need to have double and both? Oh. One, one on the other. Oh, we because we have a water and a sewer. That's not yeah, just, I, yeah. Again, I don't know the historic reason, Bill. It's been done for 20 or more years. I know. I, I've been done business with Bo and come this way. Okay. Yeah, and I don't like that answer, but I just don't know the, the math, if there is a math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I had it happen once, but you were on up and down that county. Yeah. But I got billed the double on both. Yeah. You're only re reading it once. And on your own machine once, why right? should you double on both? One or the other. I, I, because the... Without, no objections to... Well, I wouldn't, but uh, I would have... No objections to doubling the water bill. Well, the soil. Yeah. So we're only doing a machine reading once a year. No. No, no. Quarterly. It's quarterly. Quarterly. But it only reads within 100 quarterly cubic feet. Quarterly, if it feet. can, sometimes is estimated bills. Oh, if they're, they're indoors? They still have some indoor on access. Okay. Um, they should all be electronically available, but they aren't always electronically available. It depends on the weather, especially in the winter. It's oh, yeah, easy. I can imagine. You can't get to them. But the, the philosophy of the water sewer is that the sewer, the entire sewer finance is based on how much water you use. Because we don't measure sewer. Because it is equal to the gazelle. I'm only using one cubic foot when I'm getting that to cool and sewer. I don't go to the bathroom twice as much. These little conversations teach you. This conversation should be the room, I think. There's a motion on the floor. All right, so, do you want to close the hearing? Any other public, I'm sorry, any public comment? Seeing then, why don't we close the hearing? Move to close the hearing on setting the FY19 yes. water sewer and storm rate, water rates. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Berman seconds. Any further discussion on closing the hearing? Seeing none, all those in favor? 5 0. The chair move to set the FY19 water rate at $10 per 100 cubic feet with a minimum quarter bill of $20, effective with the December 2018 billing, and move to set the F, do we need separate motions or can this all be one? You could you do it all together. Move to set the FY19 sewer rate at $10.17 per 100 cubic feet with a minimum quarter bill of $20.34, effective with the December 2018 billing, and move to set the storm water rate at $60 per unit, unit being 3,210 square feet per year to be billed quarterly, effective with the December 2018 billing. I have a motion, do I have a second? Let's see, any seconds, any further discussion? All those in favor? And it's 5-0. All right, thank you. Sure. We'll now move to a hearing of um, Postmark Square. Let's get that. No raising of the water. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, I don't have a legal notice, so I'm just going to uh, declare the hearing open regarding the uh, loading zone request on Sanborn Street. I'll make it set up by Postmark Square. Lights a little bit? No. no I can see. Oh. Bob was going to go to sleep ah. if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Maybe I'll move over here next to John. It'll keep me away. <laughs> yeah. Get over here. I'll entertain you. You want me to start? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I actually want to wait for Andy and Barry. <clears throat> so, how was Italy, Bob? <laughs> This is the public interest portion of the meeting. <laughs> Vacations tend to be fast paced, so <laughs> this is one of those. 
seems to be a snail with you. I'll rest when I'm dead. Yep. I wouldn't want to rest in summer. Okay, why don't we kick it off to you? Okay, thank you. Um, in your packet, we included a memo from staff um, about the request that's before you, which is a loading zone along Sanborn Street. And the memo dated March 14th um, mentions a few um, salient points about the um, town's parking traffic parking PTTTF parking traffic transportation task force it's a mouthful um, and that's folks from uh, management planning engineering and public safety and so at a meeting um, that we held on March 14th the group um, reviewed this request for a um, this is for postmark square which is the old post office it's a 40R project in the downtown Smart Growth District. And what they're looking for is approval for an eight by 39 public loading, eight foot by 39 foot public loading space along Sanborn Street. And so we looked at the plans and the feedback generally um, uh, was in support. The, um, there is no loss of on-street parking. And I think that's one of the most important things that needs to be mentioned. Um, there is an existing 39-foot curb cut that will be closed. So that was for the post office when it was used that way. Um, and so we're basically swapping now for the proposed loading zone. So it's uh, so no 40 becomes loss. just fills a, a, a vacant 39. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pretty straightforward. Pretty yeah. straightforward. Um, engineering didn't have any record of this kind of thing coming before them in the past, so they didn't um, they didn't see any issue with it. But they didn't have any any background uh, or any similar projects that had gone this way. Public safety had no concerns, um, so I think generally the idea was that the staff felt that this was a fine idea. Um, no, no issues. Gene, do you know what the distance is from the loading zone to the turn? In any sense, the proposed loading zone to the to the corner as you go down Haven Street is that? Um, so it looks like it looks just from that it looks like it's more than fifty or sixty feet. Oh, I, I don't yeah. have that. I don't know if the, the distance to the loading zone. Yeah, if you have a truck parked there for some amount well, of time. Well, take a look at the count count the parking places. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are each twenty two feet. Okay. Good. So no no problem with line of sight. People have no yep. obstruction. That's good. So the the initial plan um, we got some feedback from the Reading Cooperative Bank, and so the plan that they ended up they, this plan was what we had looked at, and mm -hmm. the bank had some concerns, so it got modified, and the plan that is up there up. now. Mm -hmm. yeah, so was that, was that because their their entrance to their um, yeah. ATM? Yes. Turn, yeah. Turn right uh, yeah. They had some concerns. They had drive up windows there. Yeah. So, so it just got moved. What is the relevance of the red uh, markings? That red square. New building, right? Is that the new building outlines? I see. Thank you. Do we know what the, lo the loading zone is for? Is that for moving people into the apartments? Is that for general delivery? Yes and yes. Yeah, okay. And 39 feet, so that's kind of like you can fit two truck, two like FedEx trucks. One, I mean, kind of how many? Um, I'll let Tom answer that one. Right. Oh, Brad Connor. Yes, Brad, go ahead. My name is Brad Linton, and you know Tom Connery, who was one of the principals of uh, the project that we just, was described earlier. <clears throat> I'd like to work a couple of points if I could. As Gene indicated, originally the Eastern Middle had the loading zone, one parking space closer to Haven Street. I had a conversation with Julie Thurlow, 
and Tony Patty uh, on behalf of Ready Cooperative Bank. Uh, they asked us to move one place back in our request, which we've done. They said I could recite that they are supportive of this endeavor. Uh, I'd like to, if I could, go through a couple of points of the advantage of having a short-term loading area. Uh, I think, first of all, it avoids double parking by vehicles. Uh, it, this is not envisioned just for commercial use. I mean, someone could be ride-sharing. Uh, this is Smart Road District. It's consistent with that particular use. Could be an Uber, could be a taxi cab. Could be someone simply coming, drop off their taxes, running over to the accountant, coming right back and leaving. So it is short-term use for the public generally. Uh, one additional point is that you still control this. So if this is granted, which we request, for a certain duration, uh, and then you want to reassess it, you can change the time that someone can park there or change the whole concept entirely. This is not a, a, a private grant to, to someone. Uh, I'd like to go through, if I could, and just as to the philosophy and the purpose behind it, I went at a couple of studies. Uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, they did a study. Uh, it, they concluded it has it minimizes congestion and pollution because vehicles drive around the street uh, trying to find a place to park. This provides a short-term parking for them in addition to the avoiding of the stacking parking. Uh, it also uh, promotes strong economic growth and a vibrant retail environment was the conclusion of the Ann Arbor study. Uh, as far as Portland, Oregon study, loading zones allow for efficient delivery to businesses, ensure that businesses are able to receive on-time deliveries. Uh, in, uh, in Oakland, California, they did a study and they prioritized, they, they had some congestion problems. They prioritized what is the important thing that we should do on our street parking. And they, number one is the most important, and it went down to uh, 13 different items. Number one was basically public safety. Number two, pedestrian movement. Number three, public transit. Number four, bicycles. And, and number five was, was loading zones. Uh, Short-term park, long-term parking was down in that list for the sort. It's been concluded by traffic engineers and city planners to be a very valuable resource. So our request is if you'd be so kind to, to grant the request, recognizing this can be a subject to your overview as time goes on. Thank you. Thank you. Gene, the other spots on that street at present, are they two hour parking? Or are they they're permitted by permit only? Um I think that no, they are they're, two they're hour. They're not permitted. They're not permitted. Okay. Not so. yeah. They're two hour parking because yeah. everything's two everything's hour. Everything's two hour parking. Unless otherwise yeah. posted. Yep. I could imagine um, maybe this is a silly idea, but in addition to the loading zone, maybe you have a couple of um, 30 minute spots just for the instance where the Uber drives up or somebody needs to run. And it, you know, if the loading zone is filled, maybe you have one or two parking yeah, spots. Yeah, I think you probably have to see that as it as the project yeah. unfolds. Exactly, later but on. There's no question that, I, I mean, when you think about none of those streets can, they can ill afford a double parked UPS or FedEx no, truck. Just, yeah, you just bought And you know, the beauty of this is that's not a parkable place now. <coughs> um, it's not like it's being utilized as parking. It kind of is a, I think, a pretty efficient reutilization of what's been dead space for decades. Okay. Um, except, you know, as, you know, in and outs for the, you know, for the postal trucks. And since we're no longer going to be running a, uh, a warehouse terminal, <laughs> which is what we've been doing, you know, in the middle of our town for a very long time. Um, this seems to make a lot of sense to me. So this is not ex for the exclusive use of the post office building. This could be, you know, I want to, I'm delivering a package to, you know, a, a, a business on Haven Street and um, there's, well, nothing, there's no parking. Out, yeah, you could do that. I mean, yeah. you know, you could run to the end of that street if you're a delivery right. person and there's, yeah. you know, a building full of attorneys there. You know, I mean, there's lots going on. Right. Um, currently, you can't do that. I mean, technically, I mean, they really, I mean, if somebody might realize that that's a driveway that nobody uses and park in front of it, but when you see a curb cut, you know, your instinct is to stay away, move on. Yeah. Um, and, and what are we going to, uh, what, the 30 minute limit? Is that kind of what we talked about? Or is there is there a limit as to, you know, we don't want somebody just doing it and say, well, I'll just stay here till I get a ticket. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you have a moving truck, they're going to need more than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two right. hours unless you post otherwise. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, so so what what's the difference between that loading zone parking spot 
in any other parking spot if it's two hours. If I can't find a spot, I'm going to go there, and I got two hours. I mean, obviously, a moving thing is different. You know, you, those those are you, those are scheduled. You know, but if it's the pickup of an Uber guy in person or delivering of a package to the law firm on Haven Street, you know, that's that's 15 minutes. What's the enforcement difference between somebody parking a, a private vehicle in the loading zone for two hours versus is it commercial a, only? That's a good As question. a loading zone, just just a question. Uh, I know. think some of these details they're going to have to come back to you for signage, right? And depending on the tenants, as I the see. building is fitted, I think you can wait. On yeah. Detail like that. Right. I mean, the concept of having a loading zone That's fine. there is That's fine. is yeah. is yeah. positive. You know how I we agree. how we how we skinny it up. Is, yeah, I, I I think those details have to unfold as the project unfolds, and you know as utilization starts to. Um, have we heard from. Um, because sooner or later you're going to get in front of them. What are the, all those initials on that? PTT. Yeah. Yeah. PTT. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That they were. Yeah, they were fine. The whole government dialect never ceases to amuse me. Um, but uh, sooner or later they would have to get yeah. there. And again, we can't know until we know the project in detail. Yeah. What the use of it. Okay. From my perspective, this is a much better use of the spot of the space yeah. now, and it certainly is practical. In you know. Uh, and you know some details will have to be worked out, but you know get those as we go. This is a public hearing, so I'll open the floor to public comment on this topic if there is any. Okay. Any other discussion by the board? Or are we ready for to close the hearing? No. We move to close the hearing regarding the loading zone request on Sand <coughs> Street. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mary seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 5-0, hearing is closed. Move to approve the loading zone request on Sanborn Street as presented. Second. Mr. Halsey seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 5-0. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Right. And I am going to now uh, open the hearing on the Board of Selected Policies, Article 1, General Operating Procedures. Okay. Wow. Well, we're doing it. We caught up. I've been out for the uh, 30 minutes. I'll get there. Uh, So Article 1 we discussed in a prior meeting with the exception of uh, Section 1.4. I think it was late evening and we mm -hmm. we thought the better proceeding forward at I think 11.30. Um, so tonight the discussion is focused on Section 1.4. Although the public hearing is for all of Article right. 1. It, it could right. be, yeah, okay. any of the topics. John, I, I had uh, some small uh, things that <clears throat> may have been overlooked you know when I read it with fresher eyes sure uh, since then and uh, you all can decide whether you think it's important or not under um, there's a section that talks about uh, boards and committees but doesn't include uh, commissions shouldn't that be added where are you uh, uh, no um, no the charter uh, describes that boards and committees are a generic term for all. Thank you. Okay, yep. good. Thanks, Bob. Um, okay, there, there it was. It was on 115. Um, um, Anything else, Andy? Yeah. Um, down to the, the 1.7 new, new members. Um, shall establish an on onboarding process and uh, the board shall also create a, a um, selectman guide mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering I, I couldn't find this on the BOS web page is, is that it doesn't exist it does yeah. this is this is new, this new, is a new, this is a new one. yeah okay yeah. Um, sorry about that no. um, Oh, 
I thought Ray under 125, 1.2.5, um, you'll have to speak for Ray or some, somebody will. Failure, we have this sentence, failure to identify him or herself will result in the chair withdrawing permission of that individual to speak. Just remind me how, should have that been changed to may result? Yeah, I forget how on, we came out on this. If you look on the copy behind, yeah, this is the working that. draft that you haven't really voted on yet. Okay, that was not in no, our packet right. then. Right. You're looking at the original un, un right. adjusted language. What's on the screen is the results of the meeting, I don't know, two weeks ago. And that, that is what we're voting weeks on. weeks ago, right. six, I can't remember, yeah. four or six okay. weeks ago. Okay. I'm sorry. So you're right, you're right, Andy. It was suggested that that be May. Okay. With okay. another sentence on the end. Um, okay. Um, yeah. D d did you send us the working draft, Bob? At some point, yes, before the uh, last meeting was canceled. Okay. Uh, just to answer your question, Bob, uh, Section 1.5 Volunteer Board Committee Appointments, uh, we have not really got, gotten into that. Are we going to discuss that again when we bring up Section 2 kind of in tandem with uh, the um, material in there? Because there are some issues on the basket. That, that was we're, that we're was a working to. assumption from like three months ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the board can do whatever it wishes, but it made sense that whatever work you do on Article Two, right. if you need yeah. to change the basket, you do right. that. Yeah. I would actually maybe defer on the, on this whole vast thing. Yeah, until, I agree. I mean, just because, yeah. or maybe even lump them into one. Right. Yeah, you, you could know. move the vast. It might make Ottawa. sense to do that. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if there's anything that relates to anything specific. Well, why it's in section one as opposed to section two? You, you could tell me what you think of this one idea I was kicking around to keep kind of faith with the idea that you don't serve on the vast forever. Perhaps a two-year a two-year term kind of offset, mm -hmm. where maybe you have an initial one year and a two-year, and then that person becomes a two-year. So you've always got one person with experience on the board. Because technically, right you now rotate. you and I have been do doing it. Well, we have changed it in three years. Right. Yeah. So, so you don't want to you want to have some continuity. Yeah. We want to rotate and have continuity. Yeah. So uh, that's something to think about. I, I would sort of pull the whole the, the, the yeah. whole the whole way we think about volunteers, not just what this particular policy is going to be about how we appoint them, but just really the whole way we think about the role of volunteers in town government, I think de deserves kind of its own fresh mm. approach. And whether it means we just, if you want to decide to vote on section one, maybe just pull that out and, and decide that we're just going to make this 1.5, two point something, you know, I, I, I just, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not prepared to vote on how we do right. the vast right, right, right now. Bob? Um, I, personally, I like the idea of moving it to the other section, but just remind you that only this one is up for discussion, so if, right, you, were, so if you delete it, it's gone. Yeah, uh, leave it for, well, leave we can, it for now. We can, we can do that as the next Put a bookmark on it or something. Right. Or, yeah. yeah. There you right. go. So right. I'm with you. Why don't we return can, our text? Sorry, John? Can I, can I just offer a suggestion that we might want to consider? You know, we have in the past, I think we've done it twice over the last handful of years, had kind of a call it a retreat or a workshop environment it just makes me wonder if you know this isn't like a, a Saturday morning where we're not doing everything else we're focused Maybe. exclusively on our policies mm -hmm. you know our preparation you know we've got time in advance when we don't have I mean what do we have tonight four hearings yeah yes. I mean there was a lot to prepare for, for tonight's right. meeting I'm just wondering if it makes some sense I'm okay to keep doing what we're doing the way we're doing it. I'm just going to offer out that we, that's something to think about sure. um, in a more holistic way. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to occupy a whole workshop, but it could easily be an hour out of it, and you could go on to some Or we could topic. bundle other topics yeah. in that exactly. might that yeah. need to go in. I hadn't even thought of that, John, but that's actually a clever idea because a lot of what we do doesn't fit nicely into yeah. kind of the 7 to 7.30 window. Yeah, it's been done. Yeah. We have done it. We've done it with some of the other boards and committees and some of the department heads. So I'd be I'd be open to that as well. It's just a it's a suggestion. Right. I, you know. It's finding some more time during the week. All right. Why don't we turn our attention to section one point four communication? Uh, uh, and I'll just uh, make sure you all know that uh, last time we spoke about this, I I don't remember if it was four or six weeks ago. Um, I've not received any feedback from any board members, yeah. just to say that out loud. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. 
Um, I'll open the floor. When I read the original text in yellow on the screen, it, I think I said this before, it struck me just how dated this is. The word letterhead, I don't think I've uttered that word in 20 years. Um, the world's changed, and this is an example of how policies are kind of frozen in time. And, um, they've got to be tweaked and adjusted, in some cases whole scale redone when uh, circumstances dictate it. But the general spirit of this section is one of um, the dialogue largely flows through the town manager with the exception of when the board wants to speak with a single voice, which is the whole point about letterhead with one name or letterhead with four names on it, or five names on it. Um, and I only bring that up because that's at least the original spirit of the section. So, yeah. what other thoughts? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, Bob sent out, was it four um, yep. communication policies from other towns? Mm -hmm. They all looked very similar. They were very <laughs> very similar, but I want to say Easton, I'm just picking that they did it first and everyone copied. Was it all raised towns? Plain, Plainfield no, it was recently. not raised towns. Yeah, yeah. so, so um, have we put that forward for, I, I mean, I think it needs to be rewritten. Well, nothing there is relevant to anything. None of it's odd. I mean, none of it's odd. Right. I mean, nothing that's missing is 25 cool. years old, right? Right. I mean, and the only th issue or question that I have on this is the first bullet under electronic correspondence. The correspondence about a particular service that needs attention from town staff, the town manager will respond. Um, but I'm not even sure we consistently f follow that because in speaking with number of residents, my sense is that they looked sometimes to the Slutman as a resource resource for um, connecting residents to usually the town manager, but um, uh, sometimes explain um, what department and division handles. It does what. Um, it, it's just something that to to chew on. Um, I'm not sure I'm following. Are you are you saying so? That, say it, can you say it again. Yeah, um, I'll try. Um, so it says that correspondence about a particular service that needs attention from the town staff, the town manager will respond. There are which um, where is that in? This first is bullet. the first bullet under uh, page thirty one. Right yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, I think I've seen seniors ask for information about the senior tax relief, right. mm -hmm. um, which could be deemed as a service that, that one of the town uh, divisions, departments provides. And there are other examples. I just point them, you know, I think we often point them where to go. The, the town. I could be wrong, but I think the town expects that of of the selectmen. They reach out and they say, "Hey, where do I find this? Or where do I? Uh, who do I talk to about this?" It's usually the town manager, um, and so almost always the town manager. Or start with the town manager. Right. Um, Most of those, Bob's in contact and copying all those. Yeah. Goes to us since since a request might involve two or more individuals in the town, or even might involve uh, a combination of. State law or local bylaw. Yeah, it's really difficult for any of us to swim in that that lane because of this, the difficulty. It, so I assume Bob would respond firsthand and notify us if there right, was a follow up. Right. Right. Um, I think we can't deliberate, but can't we provide information as to the way the town set up or things, oh, where to find information on? Uh, um, I, I, that's a good thought. I need to get to that. But first, I just want to ask board members a question. Um, when folks um, send an email to all selectmen, I'm copied. So all six of us right. get right. it. If they send it just to you or two of you, I'm not copied. I don't know about it. So yeah. only the global, all six this of us. This policy asserts that that latter thing is very rare. Is it rare? I get emails all the time that I'm the only one on. Okay. And it comes, it's not my regular email account. It's like you have a thing from, so they've Through gone the into the town website. Yeah. I mean, I, I think them. it's important. <coughs> that's a basic assumption of all this communication policy is that it doesn't have a number, but it says almost all communication goes to all the selectmen. But if that's not true, you I might get them need on a regular change. basis yeah. individually. Because uh, if I'm not seeing things, I can't. Obviously, right. I can't so answer. When, when you say that, do you mean so there's a there's a an address for all, and then there's an address for individuals. So you don't get Correct. copied on any of the individuals. No. Can Correct. that be arranged? 
I don't know. I would think so, but I don't know for sure. Right. That seems well, like could, something that yeah. could be fixed. Yeah. But it, um, could, it could be that they're that they are not sure. want to only talk to one. I, I get it, so, but I'd be so worried about. Um, look, we, we are all very sensitive to OML. Yeah. yeah. OML is lurking yeah. all throughout this, so I would want um, yeah, Bob I, plugged in on all this. I, yeah, I just think it's to important to have it that out, point differentiated. That that's a good point. I, I see some that. of your emails. I may not see. E and if someone chose to, s to pick your five addresses out and send it to the five, I wouldn't see it. Yeah. I had no idea that was the case. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question, John. I don't know. I'm added to a group making five six. That's easy. I don't know if I can be added to a one making it a two. Well, I, you know, I know in you know in my own email system, you can issue directives for what happens when an email comes into a certain address. Yeah. You know, it can get sent out to another one, you know, fairly easy. I think, yeah, if, I think if we're gonna do that though, if it's if it's people need to know. It, there needs to be some kind of big disclosure, yeah. you know, that the town manager is going to be copied on all emails. Sometimes yeah. I people are only writing to you or me or John because they feel strongly about something and just want our action on that and would be somewhat uh, hesitant to write if they knew that it was going to be beat by somebody other than the person who would get it. So I agree with that, but uh, people need to understand communicating with any of you is a public record. It is. Right. Right. So. And, and, and we, Even if it's you know, sometimes they email the entire board right. and we had a case where some personal information was, and, and the yep. person was very surprised yep. that it was a public record, so I yep. think we need to do a better job of that. People who have done this before understand that if you put more than one of us on this thing, it immediately you know flags up a whole different approach to yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Now, for somebody that hasn't done that before um, and learned the hard way, you know, possibly, um, I think a disclaimer is the right thing. I mean, honestly speaking, I mean, if I got something coming through the town website, which is what we're talking about. It is public information, in my opinion. I feel that it is, and you know, oh, it, it is. By it is legally. It, it yeah. Is so legal. there you go. So, so to have Bob included. I mean, if a disclaimer is going to make everybody more comfortable, fine. But I, frankly, the first place I go with I get one of those is to Bob. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's one today. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's it's only, the, I'm sorry, but, no, it's almost always Bob. It's almost always you. I mean, I think one of the things that we need to address that's not written in here, um, that's why I'm not kind of going bullet by bullet, is um, what what's the expectation that when somebody contacts us, whether it's um, there's a pothole on my street to um, the five I got in the last 15 minutes about the Birch Meadow Fields, I'm probably half of you the ones who probably sent them. Um, well, they've been coming all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what's, what, I, 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 kind of like in business, all right, what's the service level agreement that basically we as a board are going to commit to that was it within X period of hours, they will get a response, whether it's something like, thank you for your letter, we're going to look into this, or thank you for your opinion on this matter, but just a, a response. Because I think one of the worst things that, that you know, people have said to me, and I, and I feel myself, is that when I when I communicate to a public official and I don't get anything back, it's like I haven't been heard. Yeah. And even if you get to something that says we got it, we're working on it, we'll get back to you, or we got it, this is going to be on the agenda next Tuesday, something. And I don't know, Bob, if it's procedurally or how you know the email system works, where you can you know you get these sort of bulk emails, right? Everyone <coughs> contacting us about the same issue. If you can empower Caitlin Stop. or Brendan to like kind of go in and under your name, say thank you, yeah. you know, some acknowledgement that um, we got it. Because what's going to happen is people say I sent them an email and they didn't hear, you know, they, they, they ignored me. And and I and trust me, everybody, we're not ignoring you. We're getting it. It's just I don't think we have the capacity or the the technology in place that basically, or the or maybe the commitment that basically says everything that we get in is going to get responded to within X period of time, and and hold ourselves to it. We have a we have a mechanism for that though. Currently, if it's if someone writes to us about uh, a comment before the board, the town manager will respond and yeah. acknowledge or does it and 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 and, um, 
and say that it'll be listed on the next board of selectmen for people asking us for action on a particular matter, the secretary um, can will draft a form letter acknowledging, thank you, you know, receipt and outlining that the open meeting law prohibits the Board of Selectmen as a whole from commenting on the matter outside of public meeting. And that the board, so I think that's a pretty good um, quick response. Um, sorry, Dan, to put the, all that on you. I mean, we could change it. It can be somebody else, but um, I, I, yeah, I think it. I mean, I think it has to. I mean, you know, a lot of us are working during the day, right? Oh, I know. It's gonna, be, you know, it's gonna be hard to kind of like drop what you're doing to. Oh, it's even if it's to be it, like 24 hour. Right. It's gotta right. be. It, 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 I think it's unfortunately has to fall to the staff. Yeah. And and uh, you know, on our behalf. Right. So we're talking about at least three things. I think one is the. Uh, just polite behavior saying got your email right. acknowledged yeah. second is actually a response that has some meat to it that says oh yeah that uh, we understand what you're asking about it'll be on the yeah. schedule next Tuesday that needs kind of human intelligence um, and the third is by what mechanism does the town manager get pulled into this so the, the first bullets up there in my mind I just collapse them all into any correspondence to any of us will include the town manager mechanically I would just put a group of two each of us plus the town manager, so you'd have five groups. And so yeah. just like the group of five works, you'd have a group of five groups of two. And I'd collapse all three of those into any correspondence to any of us, we'll copy the town manager by default. And then, I don't know our email system, but if you have an out of office greeting, you can just make that always be responsive and saying, got your email, thank you very much, we'll respond and, um, uh, shortly, Obviously it's all automated. It, we still have an obligation to respond as humans, as as elected officials, but at least the mechanics of it are all addressed. Huh? One of the things that this policy was set up to address that's evolved a little bit with electronics is uh, the selectmen were not meant to take any action except at meetings. Yeah. So if something comes in, the generic answer is we'll deal with this at a future meeting future as meeting. soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, in Reading, that's generally the next meeting. It's not always the case in other towns. Um, if it's something that requires some kind of action on behalf of the town before your next meeting, respectfully, it's probably not a selectman issue. Yeah. It's a staff issue. Yeah, like it's dust. an operational issue. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you have to think in your own minds, what are selectmen's issues that can't wait till the next meeting? And, and I'm, I'm sure there are some, but honestly, none jump to mind. I think you're right. Any of them are staff. Like, I need information on senior tax relief, yeah. or I'm having a problem with, you know, my next door neighbor, you know, it's an elderly person, blah, blah, blah. And you That's meet staff. frequently enough that it's not a huge delay right. you know, when you're getting an email. So whether it's co whether you're copied Bob or whether Gene or Matt are copied, I think that's an appropriate way to let the staff know. Hey, heads up! There's an issue over here that daytime government can jump in the middle of. Does that make sense? Yeah. The step that we don't do as much, and, and maybe we should, but we're really kind of waiting for your direction, is to explain to people what we're doing. I normally forward things that I know where it belongs, and I don't tell the person because I know the person I'm forwarding it to is going to answer within an hour. Right. So I've, you know, forwarded some things this morning to Jeff and DPW, and I know he'd already answered yeah, the draft well out. before I would have right. done anything. Yeah. So if that comes through, let's say, the selectmen's portal, right? If um, it comes through the selectmen's portal, that includes me, right. then it's going to the right place. If it comes to one of you, right. that's the right. So let's say it comes law. to you. Let's say it's a D, let's say something that Jeff's going to be able to handle. Yep. Right. So you you, you forward it to Jeff. Mm -hmm. Do you CC all of us so that at least no. now we know, okay, Bob's got this. It, it may, is that, no, maybe that's, that's something, something we, should, we can talk about. Right, as yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to drag you all into those conversations, though, from right. open meeting law. Right, no, I mean, just so, so we know now that it's being handled, right, as opposed to, or, or maybe that just goes to the chair and the vice chair. I don't know. That's something you know that you need to work out, and, and I'll work with yeah, you. Yeah, uh, it, it, just you know, your just assumption should be that every email that comes into all selectmen is going to be in your next packet, unless it's an operational issue that can't wait, it's and then it's going to be fixed. Right. And, and if it's not going to be fixed, that you're going to hear why. Should we? Should part of the policy suggest that the portal is the correct way to contact the board? That should avoid individual. It's really up to you. I, I, I don't have an opinion, Dan. If you want to be in a lot of people system. will know your individual emails and just do it that way or pick up the phone and call you. Well, if you so. respond individually, then going forward, that's the email to use. I mean, at least in my case, the one I use my personal email connect. Yeah, and that's something and so we, we can talk about. Um, technically speaking, 
this will be a can of worms. Yeah. Um, all your correspondence as a selectman in perpetuity yeah. is an open meeting law record yeah, yeah. that I need access to or right. the town does. Ray, Ray right. made that clear. So, you know, Ray and I have talked about it and our technology uh, director, Kevin, as to whether we really would be better assigning you to a reading.ci.ma.us address each individually. And then that way it's kept on our server all yeah. the time. Yeah, right. That's it's all public, so it's kind of okay, but the optics are it loses a little bit of privacy to the person who wants to just communicate with one selectman. But, but the public I, records requirement but the, It would be a much better public other. records yeah. method. Um, I, agree, uh, I agree with John. I mean, I think we have a lot of, on our plate tonight, we have a hearing about um, some use of Sunday morning fields, and this is something that I'd like to dedicate a little more time to in whatever fashion we choose. What's, we what timeline do we have to work on this fund? I, I, I've lost track. I don't know. <laughs> You've had this well, these, well, these things were written so. in 1994. So, so I, I guess nothing, yeah. nothing urgent right. is going to be. I mean, one thing you can do tonight is to approve the policy as amended, realizing it needs work. We've already yeah. said that the lax section with Sharon will probably need some work. It's yeah, too right, long. Right. It can be shortened. Right. Um, I, mean, I would yeah. suggest you do that rather than just yeah. take no action, quite yeah. honestly. If you're all satisfied with the work that's been yeah. done. They, they do have, on the bottom of each page, the dates that the page was revised. Right. So I don't know how accurate those are. Yeah, I'm I well, we can tr we can do our best now and, and say, yeah, yeah we, we can approve put crumbs, these. I get it, yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to do that. I'm, I'm okay with that. So why don't I, I'll entertain a motion to accept the document. Uh, well, recognize well, first it. we would need to ask the folks and then close the hearing. I understand. But uh, yeah. are folks comfortable with that before we... I, I want to revisit some of the things we talked about last time that I still don't understand. I well, still have that. a little craw. But, yeah. you know, um, I, I don't know if folks... You just want to let folks have a, you know, it's 9 o'clock already. I understand. So, I understand. Um, um, public comment on the discussion here. Does any public comment stand? Give us your name, tell us where you live, and what's on your mind. Bob Kiley, 18 Tennyson Circle. <clears throat> I think you should just go with what Bob says. You know, people want to converse with you on a private nature. That's all well and fine. Just bump back and say the proper channels. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the only way you can have transparency. It's the only way to protect yourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the only way to protect the town. So, you know, we don't want to one gentleman have to blah, blah, blah on his yeah. ear, yeah. and then one else knows about it. Just like you were asking, there's a problem with traffic. Bob knew about it. That's Bob's job. Yeah. So I think you should just put it out there, throw your emails away, don't <laughs> respond to them. No. It's easy. No. <clears throat> if people want to respond to the board of segment, we're here. Yeah. This is what this is made for. You're here all the time. Yeah. You make yourselves available. <laughs> it should be in open form. Thank you. Thank you very Too much. Too much technology. Good point. Mm, good point. Very good point. Other public comment? Yes. Kate Candler, 37 Warren Ave. I'm actually surprised to hear that the selectmen don't have town of Reading email, so I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Other public comment? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. Uh, sure. I threw my motion. Okay. Uh, right here. Okay, move to uh, close the hearing on the Board of Selectment Policies, Article 1, General Operating Procedures. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Halsey seconds second. the motion. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? 5-0. Hearing is closed. Move to approve the Board of Selectment Policies, Article 1, General Operating Procedures as amended. Uh, is that the right motion, though? Yeah. Okay. Second. Mr. Halsey seconds. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, I, no, there's a discussion. Um, so the whole reorganization piece, someone needs, uh, maybe we did this last time and it didn't stick in my brain. Someone needs to explain to me why we had a policy for years and years that the board reorganizes in June and then at some point, five, six, seven, eight years, whenever it was, the board reorganized in April and now we're going back to organ reorganizing in June. I need to, before I do that, I need to understand the rationale about why it changed, if not in policy, at least in practice, um, and to discuss whether or not that's a good idea or a bad idea before we go back to, to, to put this. I, I mean, I, I know we have policies and I know we have, it, it's, it, it's the policies that we have and there's the things that we do. 
And for the last, I don't know, probably 15 years. If it's Off 15 and on years, for at least eight or so. Why did it happen, and why are we going back to it? I just need well, to understand that before I want to put something now that's going to be. I, I don't know if any of us can answer the how. None of us were here. No. I don't think any of us, including Bob. It, it almost became a here. custom, and we never really read this. <laughs> no, no, no. He's yeah, asking specifically about why April. I have no yeah. idea. I came yeah. in in 12, and so, in April. And it and that's and that was what it was. No, I don't know that. No, no. I'm oh, just saying no, but I mean when you right. So at least so at least that was what years. was going on. You're the one right. when I arrived, it right. was going no. on. I have right. no idea so how it came. So to maybe it was in before. So maybe we correct. Look, if the board feels this is a better way of doing business, I'm I'm all for it, adhering to it going forward. That's. I think the principle yeah. of this is sound, which is you don't want yeah. an interruption in the last 12 months of an individual who might be excused from service, and then you've got somebody in for three months. It also connects to the fiscal year, which yeah. I think makes. I mean, when you think about it, you know, it, it, a little more globally and not in the weeds where we always seem to live, it, it, there's some symmetry to the fact that, the, you know, the, the, the year starts July 1st. So if you'd make a change at the last one in June or even the first one in June. I mean, I'm, I, again, I'm agnostic. I just want to, there must have been at some point, someone said we should do this in April and everybody agreed and it just kept happening. And, you know, and it works. I mean, the, the town well, government is going on. speculate and, that it was, yeah. a, you know, it was a knee jerk reaction to an, ele to an, ele an election at one point. And I can't right. speak. No. I don't know why. We, we, I know, think, for, Dan, we know, for example, that um, despite this policy, that from 2008 forward, chairs of boards have served in their last year. And in the 10 years prior to 2010, in five of those 10 years, despite this policy, chairs also served in the last year. It's possible that, given that reality, that a chair was excused in their last year and it became a necessity to do it in April. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that might have been it. I I, I, Makes sense? Yeah, I mean, I thought Dan did a, a good job, if I recall, last time we met on, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, I'm going to paraphrase you, but that um, other boards, committees, and commissions uh, reorganized between June 1st and July 31st. They're appointed ones, not us, but so that may be where mm -hmm. the tradition came in f f for June. Right. Um, and it also uh, goes with uh, not having, you know, our policy of not having a selectman serve as chair in the final year of the term. But then the April one came up because mm -hmm. if someone, if a chair wasn't reelected, then you had to have. Um, you had you had to have a reorganization. Um, well, or you could or you could, or you could continue with the vice chair. Since there's no real term, right, but essentially, is a, yeah. right, a reorganization. Since we don't really you serve for a term, we've served until the next election. Yes. So yeah. In theory, that would apply the next time we meet. So. Yeah. So you could you could yeah. have someone appointed in in April, and then we could also reorganize in June for well, the fiscal no, You year. would just continue on. To my interpretation. If we go by the strict language of 111, mm -hmm. we would not need to reorganize until June because you'd either have a current chair, yeah. you'd have a, you would not be here, and or the vice chair would step vice in, chair in his absence. absence. Right, the vice chair, who, you know, in this, in, 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 in cases, you could have a vice chair who is not yet in his or her third term. Um, well, be, yeah. you step into the position of the chair because you want to have continuity for town meeting. And then, which is shortly after the you know uh, election, hmm. and then then when in you start your third term, then we would we can reorganize again. Um, third term. Third year of the term. Third year. Ah, I think is what I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, thank you, Barry. It's nine o'clock. Mr. Halsey suggested we deal with this in not only 1.4, but maybe the balance of this in it. In a yeah. Workshop. Yeah, folks yeah, are comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's, there's a lot that go. I mean, the thing is, is that part. I mean, I think it's important that whatever we put in policy is something that we're willing to actually live to. Because the you know uh, the stuff that's happened over the last year, you know, even though we said, well, we have a policy, but we generally ignored it. Um, I, I think I, I think gives a, a sense to folks that. You know, well, what other policy might get ignored later? So I think it's important to get this right, and then we follow it. And, and if it takes a little bit longer, it takes a little bit longer. And so does this take your concern off uh, not being able to be here April 17th if we're not going to reorganize right away? Well, we, we, we may reorganize. Why? 
I, th we, I thought we just had a discussion yeah. about that. No, I, my understanding was that if if a chair is not re, if it, if a chair is in his or her third term not reelected, right? Then we would have to reorganize in in, in April. Um, because we no longer have a chair. We have a vice chair who steps right, right in. Right. The, the, the vice chair would step Who's in. Who's been side by side um, after let me, let, let and me finish, else. Please. Then we have a vice chair that steps in. Then we need a new vice chair, and then we need uh, a secretary. So I think we have to have a full complement of the three officers um, between April and June, and then we re we can reassess in June if right. if if and we also haven't. Uh, yeah. It says right there, Andy. The vice chair is responsible for stepping in I know that. to the chair. So there's right. no need to reorganize. And this is really just for this one it's a three month window. transition. Yeah, but for a three month mm -hmm. window, then we only have a vice chair and a treasurer and no chair. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, it's not well, like they're carrying a nuclear football around. You know? I mean, no, I mean, that, we'd still probably have to have. We still have I to have. John, I, I don't talk uh, to you that way. I'd appreciate yeah. it if you didn't well, talk I, to you me. Well, you know, I, I think I, we're I'm, making it's a lot of out of a little. Yeah. Um, I mean, all right, I all right. Fair, fair enough. Then so you can just say that. I hear you. Um, I'm fine giving the hour to either. Um, none of these are cast in concrete. We can revisit these at any moment. Uh, we've gone through this once. I realize folks may have different thoughts a month or two or a week or two later. Um, my suggestion is you should take it as it is. We'll have a, a workshop, um, weather permitting, on some Saturday. I think this is an important point to settle before we vote, though. Are, are we going to reorganize before June or not? I think that's independent of this question. I think the policies are independent of what we choose to do, what the board chooses to do after the election. Well, it's kind of important to informing people who might not be able to make a meeting coming up. But Dan, it says, although the Board of Selling retains the right to reorganize at right. their discretion. That's true. Yeah. Um, this policy established the gui guidelines of blah, blah, blah. But those are guidelines as well. They're not policies. No, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. It, the choice of a different word there implies a different conduct. I don't think anybody over the last eight years has somehow nefariously intended to, you know, violate a policy. No. I think it's one of those things that started to happen, and it built on They've itself. They've been gathering dust. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, that, yeah. that was my question. It's like, so so they had a, someone said this is a better mousetrap yeah. and people started doing it yeah. and no one thought it was a bad mousetrap. No. <laughs> you know, Actually, I don't, I don't know that that much thought went into it, Barry. I'm not sure it was a conscious act as much as an act of necessity. It was probably necessity. Why else would anyone have thought of it? Correct. Okay. Now, you know, when you look at that, even though these are, you know, old, that particular guideline around I think it's pretty good, to be honest with you, um, and I and I think that um, I understand why people have raised the question. Although I, I am convinced that over the course of an eight or ten year period of time, there was not nefarious intent. Um, I just think it was one of these things that Correct. didn't find its way to the surface. We've been, you know, we've been talking about it a lot this year. Um, we've got a situation where, you know. Um, we have the opportunity to re, to re-embrace that policy as it was originally written. I personally, I think it's a pretty good one. The lesson to all of us, though, is the, pol the more complex we make these policies, the more likely we are to find it where it's unwieldy later on. Right. And, uh, we find a reason to not follow it. <laughs> you're describing intent, and I think no, no I, I, I'm not. I just, it's just that a reason things, suggests right. a deliberative process. I'm saying it may be something that just doesn't fit, wasn't anticipated, and, and then it breaks. That's the problem. So I, I, I think the policies are clear. Um, what we've gone through, that we should, you know, redouble our efforts at following them. I agree. I agree. Part of that, I think, is also reviewing these. Maybe at Every least a couple of years. Well, even at, when the new board reorganizes, maybe uh, mm -hmm. make that as a first assignment for the board. Hey, you, we're on notice. Go, go forth and review. By the way, there's 120 pages of this stuff. So, and yeah. this is stuff we haven't even gotten to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I do yeah. And the volunteer stuff will be longer than the longer. charter. Yes, <laughs> but but they're good. Po they're, we have to have them. And I, I learned stuff I, that I was I doing agree. wrong in reading this. I agree. So, so there's a motion on the floor to accept it as is, recognizing it's not perfect, and we'll re we'll get back as amended. Or as amended, yeah. and we'll we'll get back That's to fun. it in a, in a workshop format. Any further discussion? So that would include all the red lines. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All those in favor of the current language with the red lines indicated um, on the screen. Oh, sorry. Four, five, zero. Good. 
Thank you. Um, move to our all right, last am, hearing of the oh. I don't have a notice again, so I'm just going to uh, declare open the hearing regarding Sunday hours at the Birch Meadow Field. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I, as I mentioned in my opening um, remarks and liaison, um, I do serve on the board of one of the of one of the affected organizations, and as a result of that, I think I need to recuse myself in the normal fashion that I have in the past. So I'm going to pack it up and leave you guys to yourself. We're going to banish you to a. Uh, we'll banish you. I'll text you later. Um, I'll text you later. Cream in one splendor, please. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Take the orders. Give me the orders. <laughs> it looks like this could be going on a while. This guy latte with a shot of espresso, please. You're going to be next door, or yeah, I'll be next door. Down Give me that, down to Murphy Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's going to take us through the history here? I'm happy to jump in. Thank you. Okay, Jean Delios. Um, so the memo in your packet was uh, drafted from Jenna, who's here tonight, um, the Recreation Administrator. And she outlines um, some of the issues that have been uh, presented regarding um, the Reading Softball Little League, the Recreation Committee, and um, some of the other leagues and field capacity. And um, as someone mentioned earlier, it's a nice problem to have when programs are so popular that um, you don't have enough space for everybody. Um, so the Recreation Committee has met and they have had public forums on this. They invited the neighborhood, and this is specifically with regard to uh, Birch Meadow. And uh, I won't go through everything in the memo, but um, I think the salient points are at the conclusion, um, which I have up on the screen, is the Recreation Committee recommends uh, several key points here to the Board of Selectmen. And the first one being that the time sensitivity of scheduling and finalizing rosters for spring season, um, the uh, RSLL should be approved for 9 a.m. early starts on Sundays. And this was uh, one of the key things that, that they started discussing was early Sunday morning play. And I think that's what we're here to discuss. Um, and the dates that have been called out are April 22nd, May 6th, and May 20th. Um, and as it turned out, these were the only three dates that they would ultimately need to okay. fill this void of um, yeah. not enough space. Gene, it's anticipated this would be just the one time with three and that something will be worked out with the other softball Correct. leagues next year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think given the, the season and so okay. forth. Yeah, I didn't have the background for, for Barry's question on the last policy. I, I do have some background on this. Um, I wouldn't say it's an annual event, but it's almost an annual event where the board is asked some sort of permission for amplified right. sound and or Sunday hours. Um, I have not talked to John about this, um, but he actually summarized it, it well that uh, with all due respect to the Recreation Committee, when I suggested they revisit their vote, um, my interpretation of the past was the policy was not meant for the, for the Recreation Committee to give a blanket ex exemption for the whole season. Yeah, right. That it was meant to be a specified reason, a specified period mm -hmm. of time, and then move on right back to the regular policy. It's quite a separate issue, and it may be a very good issue to discuss whether or not the Sunday ban should exist. I don't have any opinion on that. That's a whole separate topic. Right. That's a much bigger topic, though, to be discussed. Um, I want to thank the Rec Committee for, for taking my advice and going back. I think the Rec Committee handled it very, very well. Um, and I think the, the recommendation they came back with is very reasonable and within the spirit of what this, what I've seen this policy used uh, in the past. Um, there has, I don't have a list, but there has been examples. It's not just for one Sunday, it's a series of days. There's, a, there's different reasons. This is an unusual one at the beginning of the year. More typically, it's weather related. There's right. too much rain. Right. We okay. don't have enough season left, and we need to open up Sundays. Or, or too much snow. Um, honestly, yeah. this is a better reason than too much rain. It's it's you know kids participating. And I just real, wanted to say yeah. that uh, I, th I thank the rec committee for uh, taking the path they did. The real, in many ways, what we see here is a consequence of not having enough field and not having enough playing time. While it's a problem tonight, it's really the consequence of a different problem 
you know, at some point we hope to get back to the topic of should we put lighting on one or more fields to extend the playing time and therefore yeah. get more use out of our surfaces. Um, anyway, I've, I've reviewed the package um, over the weekend. I think I'm up to speed. Are there any other questions from the board members on this topic? Yeah, I, I'm. Andy, there, there was refer. Thanks, John. Um, the, um, G G Jean, maybe you can help me with this. It, it was. It was stated here under the issues um, of the rec, not director, the rec. Administrator. Administrator. Uh, the next morning, the chair and I became aware that the Recreation Committee did not have the authority to act on the early Sunday play because this falls under the authority of the Board of Selectmen, the Selectmen's policies. And I, I couldn't find the only reference to Sunday activity that I could see is um, the field and park rules and regulation state permitted use of any facility before noon on Sunday is prohibited except by special permit by the Recreation Committee. What what am I m missing? I couldn't find in our policies where the board, obviously we take this action every year, but I, I couldn't find where that's, that's not, that a lot of things fall to the Recreation Committee. They're the ones who really know the situation. What bumps that from the Rec Committee into our camp? This is just ignorance on my part because I couldn't find it. Yeah, it, it is in the Selectman's policy. Um, it's another one of those policies you need to revise. It's hidden under the DPW. Yeah. That's recreation. Yeah. 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 So yeah. my it's going to be a lot of Saturdays. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. My, my explanation, Andy, was in my opinion. Yeah. Based on past practice. Based on past the selectmen practice. should see this. Okay. That the rec committee had stepped just a bit too far. Okay. So so. It's a right amount. because they have a one-time thing. Yeah. I get that. amount. Right. Yeah. So so that is something that that. I'm that looking it up for you as you speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anything else, Andy? No. Uh, no. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of material here to to understand, um, but I don't know. I don't think so, Barry. I want to sort of we you know sort of tweeze out the difference between sort of what's the right solution and the process by which we got here. Um, I think basically going back that that. I mean, I, I want 250, 300 girls to be able to have something to do um, and, and be involved in a league and, um, and, and do all the kinds of things that are important. I, I, read through some of the, I read through some of the minutes and I read through some of the correspondence and I'm a little chilled on sort of how we sort of got to the right solution. I read about a member of the rec committee not recusing themselves um, when that properly should have been maybe the the, the process and then they had to go back and do a vote and now we're under the gun because this season's going to start soon when that could have maybe that process could have happened. I read in a correspondence that that some members of the league were um, rude and boorish behavior to staff. Um, I mean I, I will say with just uh, in, incredible clarity um, you can be boorish and rude to us five. <laughs> Right, that's in our job six, description. Six. Six, six. Well, no, nah, five and a half. <laughs> that's oh, part oh. of our job. Uh, that's part. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm wavering on that. But it is just totally unacceptable to be if the, if that is in fact the case, that any volunteer, any board member, doing business before the town is rude or boorish to a staff person. That is not in the job description. No. Um, that is not um, something that um, uh, is in their pay grade. It's just unacceptable, and it. it it kind of, it, it, I'm, I'm angry that I even have to talk about this because um, it, it should go without saying. And you know, again, I don't know the details of it, um, but it's it's been in correspondence. And I just want to say that you know, um, if people are going to do that, then they they need to be, then they, their boards need to replace them because you're not doing a service to the group of people that you're trying to serve. And you know. I'm just going to leave it at that, um, and, and I just hope and pray that the process next time, when we sort of fix a permanent solution to this, is done, you know, properly. People recuse themselves when they need to recuse themselves, um, and um, individual committees and boards and uh, organizations work together. Because at the end of the day, 
it is all about these girls being able to play softball. Um, and you know, if it's done in that way, I don't think that's a model that we want to set for these for these girls. So Actually, I found, found the section. Oh, Eddie, good. It's section 4.14.2, general regulations under the DPW Parks and Rec. Okay. Uh, sub item 5, all parks and playgrounds under the jurisdiction of the Recreation Committee shall open at 8 o'clock a.m. However, no sport or team shall begin any activities before noon on Sundays. An exception may be granted one time per year for organization by the Rec Committee. So I think that's probably why it was kicked up because this yeah. is right I, I got people. that yeah. I just didn't have the the part that says we can we can go beyond that but oh but, I see yeah, yeah. yeah. but well, it sounds like pass the true policy we're, we're kind of the appellate pass, group pass. I guess <laughs> every policy yeah. is an exception right right and and Bob explained that past practice right, I guess. right. okay good um, I can't say enough how proud I am of living in this town with the volunteers and you know, the parents helping to organize team sports, civics, drama, band. And although we got here in kind of a clumsy way, I think it's helpful that the group decided on its own to narrow and find a way to narrow the request. Um, the most precious part of our um, lives is our children. And this is an opportunity to keep little girls and their parents in close proximity and build teamwork and leadership and um, get, get kids together in a creative and meaningful mm -hmm. activity. And in some ways, who knows, these, these girls and um, on the boys' side in Little League, they learn skills that uh, just getting along with each other that pay dividends year, years later. So any way we can keep kids busy, I'm all for it. There's so many ways kids can find a way into trouble and we get them busy and get them in focus get them focused on some creative activity it's it's a real plus so um, with that I are there any other comments from the board before we open up for public comment no, seeing none um, would anyone like to make public comment if you do raise your hand give us your name your street address and tell us what's on your mind yes I'm Lisa Mamer, um, um, or sorry, Mark, I just want to say I have no formal affiliation with this league. I'm solely a parent of a child who plays in the league. Um, and I'm a real supporter of girls' athletics. I think it's just so important for growth and development of careers academically, sure. socially, and emotionally. But that's why I became an advocate. And I'm <coughs> regretting hopping into the level of contentiousness <coughs> of this issue here in town. Um, at the core, we don't have enough field access, I think, for all our programs. The demand certainly exceeds, and it's going to require really tough and unpopular decisions to make the trade-offs between either field availability, expanding the hours and access on Sundays, which there's clearly improvements, or trade-offs in the distribution of how time is allocated amongst our leagues. And in many cases, that's a no-win situation that the Recreation Commission has really had to do with. It's a, a trade-off amongst what feels like two very four options. So the initial proposal was to expand uh, the Sundays. Um, again, initially more than maybe three was the proposed solution. While there's precedent of other activities in that area, not on town fields, um, there are some past presidents. The conversation really clearly back needed around noise in the neighborhood, sure. interfering with interfering with family time. It opened that proverbial can of worms sure. um, that the committee has so long debated, and it's been so tough. That leads you back to the alternative: How do you rationalize or reallocate time? That too feels like a no-win situation for all those involved. The league, the new league, growing league, has felt like they've really had to try to squeeze out any time concessions that other leagues are willing to give. And in fairness, those leagues have strong, vibrant, long-term membership that no one wants to harm in any way in this process. So no one wants to pit one faction fighting against another. We want to be more committed in doing this. My key concern in this statement is that we don't lose sight of the motivation behind the request tonight, and that's a path forward for girls in Reading and ensuring they have equal opportunities. <coughs> that statement is not intended to imply anyone, and I'm very clear, anyone has an agenda or bias in how they've made their decisions. It really is trying to say there are inherent challenges in trying to challenge the status quo, the way we've always done things, the time people have always been previously allocated. I 
think in those type of decisions, it can be tough for the up and coming <coughs> leagues to have a fair because they don't have the rich, rich and deep history that some of our other leagues have. So I think approving the use of better appeals for these three dates is a fabulous interim solution. I think in the long run, we're all going to have to come together with facts and data to try and sort out these different perceptions around quantity and quality of how our fields have been operated, including things like lighted fields, which I'd like to hear you comment on. For girls, boys, adults, and youth, the level of politics associated with even posing these questions creates discomfort if you personalize it or assume anyone has had bad intentions in a process. And I'm so glad that that's not the case here in Reading. Rational people seek to preserve norms that have been working well historically. And I hope tonight is the first of many constructive discussions that maybe challenge how we've done things in the past and see if there are any creative solutions for how we continue to advance girls' athletics and the positive impact we have on our community. I'd just like to really again thank the Recreation Committee for bringing forward this compromise proposal and maybe setting the direction to move forward. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Alan Bollier of Belmont Street. Um, I have no skin in the game. I'm not in the butter. My sons are 23 and 24 years old. Previously, I was on the Recreation Committee 10 to 15 years ago, and that's why that one day usage for any organization that the fields in the town was changed because there was a lot of demand for that. Um, I think this, what you're proposing, should be tabled until it can truly be fixed. Um, yes, I'm not discouraging the merits of you know girls playing softball. Um, I think you're just going to open up a can of worms. Because if you open up to red and girls softball, then there's going to be all sorts of problems with other organizations and where they're going to want to use their fields. Um, I also feel as though one of the problems with our society right now, we overschedule our kids. You don't have family time, you don't have time. You're, you're then also now asking families, okay, do they go to their church of worship if they worship, or do they go to softball on Sunday mornings, on that Sunday morning? Um, I think this is the wrong precedent if you pursue this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Maureen Hurley, 274 Ash Street. Um, Reading Softball Little League, I have two daughters that participate in this league. Um, they're not coming because if you feel like it's a great idea to play Sunday softball, they're coming as a last resort. Um, we have seven weeks to get, uh, I think it's 20 teams of girls to play seven weeks in contention with the weather that we're already seeing, the usual rainouts that we see every spring. Um, it, we're, we're backed into a corner. Um, this isn't a matter of lack of field space, it's poorly allocated field space. Um, again, we have a seven week window. We share the fields with a league that has a 24 week season. Um, by my own collection of data, I found, I think it was 169 empty slots over the course of, mm -hmm. the, of the 24 weeks where the fields weren't being used. Um, again, we're using it for seven weeks. Um, again, that's a discussion that's not to be solved here tonight, but we have been met with heels dug in the ground with the other league of not wanting to meet, not wanting to concede. So, you know, if we can get back to the drawing table with them, we are more than welcome to it. That way, we can figure out a solution. And that was our original intent to figure out a way to get our league to get their full games and the other league to get their full games. It's awesome for adults to be out exercising, socializing in the sports forum, and it's very important for young girls. Um, if these girls are turned away now, I know we talked about tabling it. To table the issue is to table, I don't know, 20-something girls who want to play softball now, but can't. And time is on the up. We don't have time to waste right now and say, well, let's visit in a month. Maybe we can meet up. Um, you know, it, I think 
we all know that we could step outside of that and see the trickle effect of it. You know, to get these girls involved in this now, that will increase the chances that they'll continue to do it at higher levels, hopefully through high school. We all know there's a drug issue in Reading with teenagers. The more kids have time, we want to talk about overstructured time, but when they get to that level, when they don't have enough structured time or too much free time on their hands, that results in poor choices, poor choices of what they do with that free time. Being part of sports doesn't guarantee that they won't do that, but statistically, it helps. It absolutely helps. I've witnessed it firsthand. I daughter who's at the high school level now. And I see the kids who are involved, not just in sports, but whether it's drama, band, something to do with their time, it keeps them out of trouble, basically. Um, I feel like to turn these young girls away now is probably taking away that statistic of them having something to do later on in their life and maybe now we're increasing it say whether it's five ten girls whatever it might be who won't pursue something down the road so I do ask that this be granted because it's very important it's important now but it's important long term as well can I ask you a question yes you said 169 empty slots is that yes. correct it, is it also correct then if three of those slots could be converted into these three games, you would not need Sundays at all? Is that, is that accurate? Um, I, I don't know. You know, you say that, but that uh, that option isn't available to us. I know it's not. I'm just saying, yeah. is, is that the trade? It's If you could get three out of the 169, the problem goes away. No, um, I'm sorry. Don't you have line for weeks? They're different weeks. Yeah, it's different weeks. I see. It's, um, to compare the men's and girls, it's very apples and oranges. I think, Mr. Yeah, Chair, that part of it was that weeks, the, dat the data was sort of unclear, at least what I pulled out of the minutes, yeah. the data was sort of unclear, mm -hmm. and that we really needed to kind of understand who was using what and when, and that maybe, you know, there's a way to reallocate it so that either Sundays aren't needed okay. or, I mean, so I think that's, I think that's an unknown. So to say it differently, right. there's enough empty space where an alternative solution could have been engineered that would have avoided the need for SEMS. Sunday entirely. Again, I, I don't okay. have the master schedule. Know. That's not okay. right. All right. But from what I'm showing traditionally, when I compare both seasons in 2017, right. yes, and when when the girls' league was not using the fields, the number of games per week actually dropped when the fields were uncontested. Um, hmm. I think it went from like say like 22, 19 earlier in the season, and then. Towards the middle of the season, um, the games dropped to like 16, 15, 12, <coughs> dropped on from there on. Um, so again, this isn't to rip down the men's softball league, it's just from the data that I can find between the two leagues, internet sites, <coughs> that's what I saw. Okay. Um, so again, that yes, I absolutely think that that's a conversation that needs to happen and isn't going to get resolved tonight. And at the current rate we're going, it's not going to get resolved before we need to get both leagues underway. Right. But um, that is why we're here tonight, because we don't have any other options right now. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Nancy Swain, 14 Center Ave, um, former Recreation Committee member for 12 years. Um, <coughs> so we sat through a lot of these meetings in the past on the Rec Committee. And a couple things I would say is, one, I'm hearing um, Men's softball is being very cooperative and has always been. Um, you know, we had them talk to them years ago about end of game celebrations and they, they understood. Yeah. They have a place uh, to go now. Yes, they have a place <laughs> to go now. So that's good. Um, but uh, besides them being cooperative, there used to be a league that had similar numbers and they used, um, seem, somehow managed to, uh, to use the fields that they were allocated. So I think, you know, you need to look at field allocation. I saw some, the men's so, um, softball schedule last year, I saw what the uh, Little League did, and I started looking and said, well, look at all this open time. So I think it really, you need to look at how are the fields being used. And if you're putting the minor people, which I'm assuming are the wee ones, um, out on the light softball field, what do you get stick two teams on either side, and they're yeah. not going to end up hitting each other. You can't do two men's teams there, but you could do two. I see. Teams. I see. So I think you know maybe help. There needs to be some help with the people in the league or whomever does the scheduling to look at it. Okay. Um, and I also am concerned just that this is going to have scope for great. And I live near Washington Park, and Sundays is our morning. There's Sunday mornings is 
we need that because we're inundated the rest of the weeks between school and everything else. Thank you. Other comments? I'm Bob Kaminer at 37 Warren Avenue. Um, I just have a question. It's a, it's a new league. Isn't it just like a change of ownership? Because I, the girls have been playing there softball for years. You said it was a new league. Isn't it? So it's a non-profit league now. Yeah, there are no ways to put this in the ballpark. And the, revenue, right. the reason the new league was yeah. done was because the numbers had gone significantly down. It was and becoming it was fading. Okay, thank you. And also, is, um, is Killam Field uh, used at all? I know it's used. Boys or girls? It's used in the summer. I played there when I had my uh, single A, double A. You know, you know for the little boys or girls, they do. At the youngest level. It's almost all dirt anyway because it's yeah, used so much. I, 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 I coached there when my kid was seven. He's now 18, and it was lousy then. Yeah. I can't see it having yeah. improved. I haven't been on it since then. But, um, we actually played there. I think it was two or three summers ago. My daughter. Um, yeah, it's the conditions of it are not they're just not safe. Yeah. Um, it, it was pretty and girls bad. Their yeah. On this rock, yeah, this rocks in the, in the infield. infield. This yeah. is in the outfield. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been suggested to us. That's not a, a viable yeah. solution. Yes, sir. Larry Hurley, 274 Ash Street. I'm a member of the running softball the league board. Um, just to, I just want to clear something up. It said, mentioned six and seven year olds, and then, as if that was a <coughs> division for us. Our division, the youngest division, is seven through nine. That they were consider, said considered for Kellum. You know, we're trying to start to teach these girls to slide. Right. You know, seven, eight, and yeah, the seven year olds might be a little more hesitant, but the eight and nine year olds were trying to get them to do that. So that was the reason I know and I noticed in minutes and others that right. and a couple of emails that it said six and seven year olds, and I just wanted to clear okay. that. Thank you. Thank you. Any of the public comment? Yes, sir. Sure. Um, John Yeroch, uh, 10 Fairview Avenue. Hello. Hey, good evening. Um, I'm also a member of the Reading Softball League Board. Um, I guess I just wanted to state a point. Everybody's making valid points tonight. Thank you for that. And, um, one point that Mrs. Hurley had made was the uh, the uh, allocation of field space that was not being used. So I, if I may, I may just want to sure. make two points. One's a point related to field space, and one is just an observation of the, the growing population of the town. Sure. Um, and you have those figures, I do not. But I can only imagine with the with the development of Johnson Woods, Reading Woods, <coughs> Reading Commons, Haven Street, and the new Doucette development of 77 more units, we're bringing a lot more families into our great town. Sure. A lot more families sure. represent a lot more children, a lot more children in the town. With the not growing amounts of field space that we have to accommodate the growing number of population, we'll have a growing number, a growing percentage of children not playing sports. So that's just an observation I wanted to make on that regard to address somebody's point of perhaps the need for more space downstream. Um, the need for the space in the summertime as well. Our spring, I know that that's the address, that's the issue for the, for the night, but we also put forth a great effort to give the children a, a chance to play summer ball as well. And we would love to have the opportunity to, we can only have four teams in town right now in the summertime. We, unfortunately, we've done such a, we think, really good job with that program, in addition to the spring program, that we actually have most of our league try out for, this, for our summer teams. Unfortunately, where we have 23 teams of probably between 12 and 13 players in the spring, we only have four, four teams in the summer mm -hmm. of about 12 or 13 girls. So the, the unfortunate situation of many girls being turned away in the spring, the 20, 25, 30 girls, that's multiplied by probably four for the girls that want to play in the summer because we just don't have the space because it's being allocated to the other leagues. Just my, just my point, it. observation worth arguing for. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Yes. Donna Bollier, Belmont Street. Um, I just don't want to lose sight of, um, you know, I don't envy your positions because you have a lot of differing factions vying for this positive outcome to where they see it. But just don't lose fact, sight of the fact that there are neighbors who uh, abut all of the fields that we're talking about in Birch Meadow and potentially down the road if it opens up to Sunday mornings. And 
you know, just don't lose sight of the fact that they might cherish a little bit of quiet. <coughs> and I don't uh, subscribe to the opinion, well, they bought the house, you know, and there was a field there. That's not the point, because population has changed. Things have um, gotten busier and busier. So that's just that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any public comment? Yes. Petra Convoy, 35 Warren Ave, first base on Washington Park. <laughs> I do cherish Sunday mornings. If I want to sit on the patio and have coffee and read the paper, I do not want to think about foul balls flying. Not fair. You know, it, it is busy there Monday through Friday from 3.30 <coughs> till dark. You know, Monday through Friday. Saturdays, it usually starts by 10 and it ends about 4. Sometimes uh, in the summer, they start at 6 and go till 8.30. If I want to have people in my backyard on Saturday night, sometimes they're nervous, seriously. Um, so I think Sunday morning is the payback. And I have always appreciated it, and I do not want to see it go away. Just a point of clarification, we're just talking about Birch Meadow, Birch Meadow not Washington Park. Park here. However, yeah. I think we're on a slippery slope, and I think it would be naive to think if we say we're going to do this for one field, that other people are not going to come forward and say we want the rules changed on all the fields and we want all leagues to be able to play on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think it's very naive to think it's not going to creep. If I could be so bold, what I think I'm hearing is, one, a general desire of all to try to find a creative solution. Two, a recognition that um, uh, there's no desire for scope creep, that whatever is done here today be recognized as solving the problem of today and not a trend or a um, policy change going forward. But, um, and, and I'm not trying to put words in anyone's mouth, but I think of this in two ways. One is, how do we contain the problem, the problem at hand, which is girls' um, softball? And then two, how do we correct it going forward, which might be scheduling or it might be... Some negotiation of uh, key people. There may be better allocation of the resources we have. For those who don't know, there was a proposal, I want to say four years ago, to put electric lighting on <coughs> five of the fields over at Birch Meadow. It failed by virtue of um, having insufficient funding in the capital plan. It's going to come up again at some point, but that would add three to four hours a day times five fields um, for nighttime play. It doesn't necessarily help little girls, but it would help guys, you know, teams that do play during the day could shift their hours and thereby open up those fields. That's kind of the long-term plan. We, we've really got to find a way to get better use out of our fields. But I view this today as just how do we contain the problem and then the corrective action could be a combination of better scheduling, maybe someday lighting, maybe someday <coughs> even other fields. Um, it, is that, I'm, I'm not asking for a show of hands, but if you could limit it to just containing this problem this year, are folks kind of okay with that, generally? Anyone not okay? Yes, sir. <coughs> I am a butter. Um, Saturday morning at the field at the, um, football field, the, the, the gun goes off at 9 o'clock, they start running. That's school department. Yeah. That's okay, I know where I live. But <coughs> Sunday morning, you open up a can of worms, you're treating this as one instance, then you better make a permit, just like you would for the Easter parade, <coughs> of softball for three times. Because if not, you're going to have everybody on their brother coming down here, just like Frisbee on Saturday nights. Thank God they moved off the football field. It was horrendous. The noise is incredible. I have no problem with our town. I've lived here since 74. I think it's vibrant. I think the kids need things to do. But the noise level down by Birch Meadow has increased over time. And you're on the? <coughs> I'm in Tennyson Circle. I'm okay. on top of the, the hill. Yeah. I get all the bounce back. And I understand the softball's gonna be way over the other side. There's no whistles. Uh, it's not about softball, it's about precedent. The precedent right. setting. So your that, point that, is... That, that's all I have to say. So if you're going to do something in your in your quorum here, make it a special amendment for these three games so you can accommodate <coughs> what they need to have done. And I think they need to have something to have done. I and mean, they should be able to play their game, but not at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. Okay. Thank Andy. you. Um, I, I, you know, I, I feel sort of... Uh, tr trapped here as, and as a community. Um, I want to see, I love to see kids playing sports and I want to see uh, 
girls sports attain the same level of, for lack of a better word, respect uh, as, as, as boys sports. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, we, we have to protect our residents who live in these neighborhoods. Um, so I think everybody recognizes that, but there's, it's a sort of a no-win situation for, for all of us. I, I would like to ask, are any um, rec committee members here tonight? I think I see one, maybe. Three, and, four? And, and, and so, so the concept has been brought up that there could be a solution <coughs> if you reallocated field space um, that we wouldn't have to do the Sunday morning thing. I is that a possibility? Or just, it's not happening at this time? You mean, so, is it a possibility this year, not generally? Yeah. Okay. So, sure. uh, Dan Foley, 32 Grand Street, I'm the chairman of the Recreation Committee. Um, through the, you know, what we've presented to you and our recommendation in the packet and to the discussions we've had um, and points that other folks have made too, I mean, ultimately that may be the solution that we get to uh, at this point in time, the process we've gone to, where we are and with our desire to help, um, you know, the, the league, um, yeah. you know, what we are recommending is, is those three dates. Because um, you don't think we can get to it soon enough yeah if, if if there was more time if we could have more discussions more discovery those it's it's very realistic that that is the solution yeah um, right. but you know we don't have that information at this point in time we haven't made that progress as yeah. quickly unfortunately as quickly as we had hoped we could so um, that's why we bring this to you so, so Dan, Dan, I have I have a question. Sure. Um, you know, and again, I'm glad that everybody kind of put their heads together and come up with a band aid because that's basically what I view this as as a band aid, not a long term solution. I'm not interested in opening up the discussion about whether or not things should be done on a Sunday. Um, and I am not, Petra, as someone who's gone into your backyard, into your front yard, a million times to retrieve those foul <laughs> balls playing at Washington Park. Um, I'm not interested in expanding it on Thank Sunday. You. So I, I just want to say that. I up front um, so the proposal here sa states the three Sundays starting at, at 9 um, is it possible to get those games you know the amount of games in maybe starting an hour later at 10 I mean, 9 o'clock is still kind of early in the morning on a Sunday if it got pushed back an hour is that is, is that something that you can get the, the requisite number of games in maybe they play an hour later but some of those folks that want to have their coffee on a Sunday morning and not see, you know, the cars driving up and the pings of the balls, you know, is 10 o'clock. Has that been addressed? And, and if it has and, and you came up with nine, it, that's fine. But I just want to see if that was in, in the initial, you know, um, motion 10 was suggested. Um, an amendment was made uh, in the keep it in line with, you know, other uh, start times, you know, on Saturday mornings, um, and also that hour, it, it was voiced to us, and the crew was valuable to the softball league to allow them to get additional games in. So starting at ten, and uh, so so it would be from nine till. Is there an end time? I didn't I didn't see an end time. Uh, uh, there's no change in end time. What's already in the policy? Um, I believe it's ten o'clock at the lighted field. Oh, so ten o'clock um, at night, right, on a Sunday. Well, right. I mean that's not going to happen because right. So that those later right. games on Sundays are allocated these are all to the these kids are all going to, to the men's league, right. correct? So, Dan, where does it state in your recommendations that this is restricted to Birch Meadow? I didn't see that in there. Is that implied or is that somewhere else? It was way up top. Yeah, oh, way up top? right there. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank One you. of the meetings was a. Got it. Okay. Is there a question in the back? I, I have a question Sorry. also. So, a, a nine o'clock <coughs> game start time, does that mean the girls are going on the field at nine o'clock? Because. Yep. No, oh, maybe you're right. My, you know, my experience is they usually warm up for at least 45 minutes. So my guess is they're going to be on that field at 8.15. Um, my, for my daughter's playing, we never did a 45-minute warm-up. I was usually a half an hour or so. Um, but that start time encompasses two games being able to play per field. 
A 10 o'clock start time means we can only get one game. Because we have the fields at 12 o'clock. So we can't get two games in between 10 and 12. Oh, so you're already start, You're already playing Sundays at noon, right? We have right? the fields from right. 12, 12 to 4.30. 4 yeah. Okay. So we need to, yeah. I mean, it doesn't do us any good to shift it because men are coming on the field at 4.30. And do you have, um, I, I know in Little League, um, baseball, this was years ago, there was, um, you play six innings or there's a time limit. Is, is, is that the same thing here? So we, we have a 90 minute time limit per game? So okay. you know, the seven and nine league is an hour and a half. The older kids are an hour and 45. And so, you, and, and, and there's, and you, we don't know uh, the scheduling for the Sunday mornings, if it's going to be the younger group or the older group? Or? It would be, the plan would be for the younger girls to go early because of the hour and a half start time. And these are these are t games that can be played on the opposite end of the diamond, so they're not hitting it so far that they'll interfere. Yes, right. Correct. All of our games, there's no interference right. with bad balls being hit in the infield. So we're not talking about you know you you got relatively short flight of flight distance on the ball. Yeah. So, okay. So, I mean, I, I'm just going to throw out a you know something to think about, and whether maybe you've already discussed this or not. I mean, is it possible? To let, you know, basically you're going to be playing, you know, all during the week. Is it possible for those Sunday morning games to be limited to 60 minutes, so that you can start later and still get two games in? Are you micromanaging? Six, uh, 60 I, minute games. Yeah. You coached, right? That's not a lot of time. No. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's interminable <laughs> when you're watching, but. Yeah. If we're talking about seven, eight-year-olds. <laughs> Knowing the pace of a softball game, <laughs> 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 I mean, we're talking about a kid getting up. Like, this is an instructional league. We want the girls no, to I understand. have fun and yeah. enjoy yeah. 60 minutes. And okay. Not to mention, people could get you know upset because we do keep records, and people could be like, well, if we had another half an hour, I didn't get my at that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, I know. I, know. I, just, uh, I just threw it against the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah swing it back. Um, I just want to point out the. Reading Girls Softball League, they're entitled to one already, one exemption already. So they're really only asking for two exemptions from what the current policy already is. So you're really only talking about six hour difference on the course of a whole season. Just making that aware. And it seems to me if, if that's what they need, yeah. it seems reasonable. Thank you. I've done. Uh, yeah. Alan, I really want to uh, kind of second your comments earlier. I, I kind of, in a way, wish we could go back to simpler times uh, where people spent more family time on Sunday mornings. But it's sort of crept into place over, I mean, we've got Pop Warner out there now. Uh, this, we've got things happening indoors. So uh, I just want to validate your comments in that direction. But I think there is enough flexibility to schedule worship time around these events. If families want to do that, I think they have their options. But I'm more just kind of pointing out, we're only really talking six hours and that we are. seems... And I appreciate your coming back. We're yeah. bouncing around different subjects, but... Right. On the whole, it's a small number. Yes. It is. There we go. Thank you for your comments as well, Alan. I think I second your thought about family time. It's, uh, it's busy. Yeah. We need some time with our kids. Yeah. Um, any other discussion? I, yes. I, I said what the gentleman just said. You know, give the girls a softball this year, but don't set a precedent. I, I don't you think know, anyone yeah, here, nobody here is saying that. You yeah. guys look you at the back, you always look at the past stuff, yeah. you know. Don't break the ground rule. I yeah. mean, if not, we're going to have Hush League <laughs> at 9 o'clock. Yeah. And that's how you're playing at 9 o'clock on Sunday. Yeah, no, okay. I, 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 Call yeah. All, whatever, whatever people want. But, you know, they have a glitch. Fix their glitch. Move on. Get your stuff I, done. I agree. But, you know, but don't set a precedent, please. I agree. It feels as though if this had been done differently, which could have been avoided, but we are where we are. Right. That's what I meant by contain it. Let's fix this problem this year for these three games and solve the systemic problem. Yeah. The corrective action next year. So is that, Mr. Chair, that leads to my question. So maybe Dan or mm -hmm. or Jean, Jean, you know, somebody. Um, what's the plan starting tomorrow that gets this fixed for next year? I mean, is there a plan? Is it, uh, uh, Can I answer that, Barry? Somebody, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Kate Cameron, I'm a non-voting member of the Recreation Committee. Um, Bob is 100 percent correct. This is an annual discussion that comes up, and. Every league in town is overbooked and has waiting lists. As a matter of fact, our uh, town summer camp was uh, filled this past February with waiting lists. So it's just that's what we live with here in Reading. To your question of what's going to happen tomorrow, I would 
recommend that you guys recommend that let your town professional, Jenna, who is outstanding at what she does, let her do her job with no interference from league representatives, board of selectmen representatives. Let her do her job. The rec supervisor has been able to navigate this dicey issue for the last 50 plus years yeah. and brought okay. yeah. leagues together yeah. and, and sought okay. compromise Good. and has gotten compromised. So, you know, people have to compromise. Both sides have to come willing to compromise and let the supervisor do her job as she has in the past beautifully and you will get resolution. Yeah. Kate, I, 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 pre I saw your email dated March 21st and there's some other things that I'd like to the board to talk about uh, that are in the content of that email that don't really uh, apply to tonight, but I, I don't want to let them go either. Um, but I, 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 I agree with what you said. Let, you let the professional do her job no, yeah. and and um, <coughs> and fix it to the best we can. Any other comment? I'm sensing we're coming to con convergence here. Okay. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to add that you know, um, on behalf of parent who is involved enough with this process, obviously, um, I don't think anybody's trying to stop anyone at the town from doing their job. Um, we, you know, we obviously are trying to get an end result, a good end result, um, and uh, uh, you know, it's just that we have hit roadblocks all along the way, and it's. Here we are tonight because we haven't been able to find resolution. I hope that changes going forward in the future. Um, so this isn't um, Reading Softball Little League trying to create some sort of circus and throw a tantrum of wanting fields. I want to be very clear that we've tried the very fair, proper process um, that wasn't able to work out until we got here. So I do hope that uh, whether it becomes, I mean, there is a little bit of contradiction in that statement because to say just let Jenna do her job, but yet we're talking about the leagues coming together and working towards compromise, and it's not clear if that's with Jenna involved or not Jenna involved. It's that's just, her job. Okay. Yeah. That's her um, job. Not anybody's on the different boards, and it shouldn't even be our job. It's it, her job. Right, Sorry. right. Um, again, we right. haven't been able to get to that solution, and I don't know, um, maybe this is a good question, where does the town send the message of there needs to be compromise? Not like, will you compromise, but there needs to be compromise in the future. I, I, think, I think the discussion tonight is a clear indication that, that that that's what we as the board are suggesting. And who ensures it happening, though? I think Bob, Jean, Jenna, right. right? Okay, yeah. okay. All right, thank you. All right, any other public comment? Going once, going twice? Um, you want to close the hearing? Sure. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen close the hearing regarding Sunday hours at the Birch Meadow Field. Uh, we second. have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor? 4 0. <coughs> Uh, move that the Board of Selectmen approve the Sunday hours at Birch Meadow Field as presented. Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah, I mean, again, just for the folks here who are worried that, you know, the slope is slippery, um, I, I'm, I'm going to support this for two reasons. Um, well, maybe three reasons. Um, the most important is that some of these girls have gotten a notice that said that they're on a team, and I don't want to break any girl's heart that they can't play because we didn't we didn't do this because we didn't maybe follow the right procedure. Um, so I'm going to support this, but I'm also going to be really really clear that if anybody's watching out there that has an idea of licking their chops at Washington Fields next or whatever, that's you know that's not what I'm supporting. I'm supporting we're going to get this done, and then Jenna and the staff, you're going to figure out a way. To make this happen for next year um, without any um, drama um, and so that um, these girls can play the boys can play the men can play everybody can get out there breathe the fresh air get some exercise so that's the the way that I'm supporting this tonight I, uh, I view it similarly this is a one-time exception to deal with an ex extreme situation 
Um, one thought might be that we do the scheduling and say, I know this is going to sound strange, but if we did it in October or November of the prior year, you'd have plenty of time to deal yeah. with uh, yeah. exceptions. Is that the way it's done today? Let's see. Um, but I do view this accommodation as purely a one year. It's not, I don't view this as a slippery slope or even a key. One year, one field, one sport. Yes. One team. One, yeah, one. One league. Yeah. Any other comments? <laughs> one ranch. <laughs> yeah. I, it sounds like a t-shirt. I'm not happy to be in this position and I, and I, and I, um, and I, and I echo Barry's comments. I do not want to be eating into this Sunday morning field use. I understand that it happens on the turf field, that's the school committees say, and it happens indoors. Yeah. Um, that, but, but, but going outside of that, I, I, I'd like to hold that um, one space of time that the residents can have a quiet Sunday morning. I, I also want to see if there's a concern about um, equality, um, I'd like to see that addressed. And, and I don't want to be back here next year um, w with a similar problem. I'm hoping that Jean and Jen, Jenna can work work this out um, and, and, and hammer it through. And thank you to the, all the members of the Recreation Committee. Sounds like a thankless job. Uh, the good news, if you're all here tonight to talk about one thing, which is how do we find, how do we get to yes? And that's just the mark of a community that's trying to find a way through a problem. I think you're all to be commended. You could all be at home doing something else. You chose to be here tonight. I think that's just the mark of a great community. And we're fighting with each other. <laughs> well, you're not. We're trying to, right. trying to find a way to get to yes. So I just want to thank you all for coming out. You, could, you know, it's it's 10 o'clock. Most people aren't sitting in town hall at 10 o'clock, except for the five of us. So. Um, okay, we have a motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Five, four zero. Four zero. Okay. Five minute break. We'll yeah, take a five minute break. Go find John we have to go. Okay. Thank you all for coming.
the downtown. It's in the 40R district. Mm -hmm. um, and it's before you tonight because there are a couple of things that were included in the packet um, that the applicant is seeking um, from the board. So I'm going to turn it over to the applicant and have them kind of walk through a little bit on the project and then kind of what they're asking for from the board. I, I just want to make one thing perfectly clear. They're not asking you to vote in it. No tonight. vote tonight. Right. This is just a, sort of the, the introduction and then it'll have to be a public hearing and come back. Okay. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. Should, should I address the board from here? Or Will you stand up? You can walk around. Whatever you want to do. If you want to point to the... Opinions. Very easy. Step out of the way or in one spot. So Why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian McGrail. I'm an attorney. Good uh, my office is at 599 North Ave in Wakefield, right over the Redding Line. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Ray Bogus. Uh, he is... Um, he is the principal of the, the main member of uh, Bogus Properties LLC, which is the uh, owner entity of the applicant. Uh, also is uh, with us tonight is Rob Del Savio from Embark, Embark Studio. He's our architect uh, for this project. And finally, Tom Bertulis, who is School Design Consultants. He's our engineer and uh, he was our traffic consultant uh, for, the pro for the project. Um, we're here before you tonight relating to uh, the construction and operation of a 31 unit rental uh, building mixed in combination with approximately 2,500 uh, square feet of commercial space to be located at 467 Main Street uh, in Reading. It's the uh, current site of the Sunoco gas station uh, right on Main Street. This project uh, that we're before you on tonight was approved by the Reading Community uh, Planning and Development Commission uh, pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40R and also Section 10.5 of your zoning bylaw. Uh, we previously uh, provided your board with a copy of the approval decision by the CPDC uh, that was filed with the Reading Town Clerk on February 14, 2014. We also uh, supplied you with a copy of, a, I guess, a mini site plan uh, illustrating uh, the items that we wanted to discuss with you, I guess, specifically tonight uh, as referred to you uh, by the CPDC. Um, I think maybe before getting into those specific items that we're looking for your consideration and your approval on, perhaps it's helpful if our design team just gives you an overview of the site and what has been approved by CBDC. So when we're referring to some of these things, you'll have an idea. Maybe you have some general questions in that regard uh, that we're happy to answer. But once um, we do that, then I'd like to present the three items that we're, we're seeking your consideration. Go right ahead. One. Okay, thank you. I'll be first. Okay. So just to orient everybody, uh, Main Street is here, Washington Street this end, and Green Street up here, and the site is, as Brian just said, the former Sunoco gas station. Next slide, please. So these are some context photographs. This is obviously the view directly to the Sunoco gas station. This is a view looking down Main Street with Green Street coming out of this intersection here, and we'll be spending a little bit a little, little bit of time discussing the curb cut location off of uh, Green Street. And the other thing you'll see here along Main Street is a fair amount of curb cut condition getting yep. access in and out of the gas station. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as we get into the floor plans. <laughs> uh, so we worked pretty uh, intensely with the planning group to alleviate some concerns that they had and improve the overall walkability and presence of the street. So the early schemes that we had, had we maintained that curb cut off of Main Street and we really didn't like how that was affecting pedestrian activity along Main Street and they really urged that we push, push the curb cut onto the property back to Green Street. So that's right. kind of how we have it yeah. right now, which I think is actually a lot better. So we'll fill in the curb cut that's there today, extend the brick pavers that are exist in the, the island there front entrance to the residential uh, building will be here. Everything that's blue is retail space, which the developer is kind of starting to look at different potential tenants for that. And then uh, maybe even have some outdoor seating along that retail shop, uh, you know, a coffee shop or something similar. And then <clears throat> the curb cut, which today is right about here for the gas station, gets shifted up, it's about 43.7 feet from the corner <coughs> to the curb cut. That curb cut gets you into part of the parking area, which is at grade. It's under the second floor of the building, for the most part, wherever it's yellow, is sort of covered by the building above. And early on, I had some concerns about traffic, especially on Green Street, and visibility as you pull out of the garage. So we had the garage door here. It's now been pulled back here to give uh, uh, people, pedestrians especially, some better access for any cars coming out. I think that works well. It also gives two parking spaces to the vendors, the operators, the retail space. Uh, separate from the residential. How does the relocation of the door uh, 
better. Because as, a, as the door is up and the car starts pulling out, they can see out to the sidewalk much faster than they can when the door was here and suddenly right. are on top of whoever might be on the sidewalk. I see. I see. Yeah, like Mass General. Um, What's that thing in the upper left-hand corner? Is this all one building? No, that's the single. That's the White House. This is that's, that's the White that's existing. Single that's the existing, existing, family, which existing is not family. part of this. Yeah. Right, and then there's another one up up top. There, right. Yeah, and then there's a part yes. of the, okay. this one right. you see right. as well. Right. Right. How does the uh, you're going to get to this eventually? But how does the um, curb cut on Green Street affect uh, queuing and affect uh, you know number of cars waiting to? That's already a contentious. Well, it's going to be less contentious because yeah. it's not the right turn only. You know about the right turn only. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's yes. The right yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so Tom on the traffic side can talk about right. that. Okay. A few more slides on the building. So will there be? So did I understand you to say that there'll be two retail spots because you move the garage door back? It could no. be I mean, for the, uh, yeah, so for the owners. Retail. So maybe it's one. Whoever works there, you know. Like. Right, for those two spaces, I think, Ray, we talked about potentially hours of use as a residence pull out. A retail user could use, or operator could use that space. So to clarify, they, all the parking is not designated to residential. That's how it got approved. But we have recommended from the CPDC that to not include the parking space with the rent and to have, you know, Assign them afterwards according to demand. So if there isn't a demand for all 1.25 yeah. uh, yeah. ratio parking spaces, then we can designate some points of retail. That's correct. That's yeah. I like that. But That's but there but there wasn't any dedicated retail spots. No, no there isn't right. any dedicated designated okay. uh, retail spots. But there are now three parking places in front. I see that were no longer that weren't that aren't there now. Yes, that's correct. Exactly. So part of the work is it's all curb cut, right? Yeah. It's right. all curb cut. Yeah. And then if the demand isn't there for the parking, which uh, I've talked to some of the buildings in town, um, and there is a lower demand than um, the 1.25 they've been seeing, uh, then we can start right. you know, detonating some of those to some of the people that work in the retail building. And that way, we pull some more cars off the street. Yeah. Those three, those three parking spots in the front, though, is that designed to be shorter term parking, or? I'm not sure how it finally got written. The three, the three parking spaces up yeah. front, the way that got written is, is that um, that's one of the three things that we're seeking approval from your board tonight that I'll get into some details oh, okay, on. Okay, I'm sorry. Just, no, that's okay. The gist of it is that um, if it's approved by your board, my client, Ray, would install those at his expense. So any costs associated with the curb cuts, whatever it is to be done, will be done by it, fully at his cost, but then they will be, at those spaces would be at your discretion. So It'd be public spaces. Yeah, public spaces. Right. So, so, you know, the, the two-hour limit, unless yeah. otherwise designated. We can, we can label them anything we wanted. Right? Well, depending on when they, if the retail goes in, if it's like a dry cleaner or right. something, bang, you, bang. You, don't, you don't want it two hours. You want someone to pull in there, get that minutes. thing, and go. Yeah. Right. I don't so. think we know yet what it's going to be. Right. Yeah. But we can, make, we can make the determination about how we want to designate yep. it once there's a usage and you get a feel for well, it's it. It's kind of like what we talked about with, with the post office building. I mean, you know, at a certain point. Four days ago, it seems like. You can't get it all. Right. Okay. Exactly right. You gotta get just get it moving. Yeah. You know, um, the fact that there's three more spots out in front is not small, in my opinion. Yeah. So is that space, John? Just referred to this three parking spaces there. The space in the just in front between the building and the street is that sidewalk right now? Yes. So those cars would be crossing the sidewalk, pedestrian traffic to go park there? No, they're going to go in through Main Street. Like this. No, it's right on Main Street, Danny. It's parallel right. parking on Main. Parallel parking on Main. That's Just curb. like in front right of now, Professor's Market or something. Right now the curb kind of goes like that, and the sidewalk is actually fairly wide there and tapers a bit as you get closer here, so we thought let's eat into it where it's, it's thickest and <laughs> it's widest with the three spaces. Right. Is it that thick today? In, in its yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, th and that treatment at the edge of that is brick, you said? Yes, this darker gray zone. Yeah. It's the brick that's out there today. But it's probably 65, 70% of it curved up. Okay. So you have this little patches of the... Uh, right, because that's, like, that's how you got it to the gas station. Right? It's yeah. just a huge... Yeah. Yeah. Big wide. I may have counted too quickly, but I counted 37 spots inside the garage, whereas the calculation of 1.25 would be 39. And you counted those as well? Oh, are those included, even, yeah. though, even yeah. though they're... Um, out of the garage, out of the door. But they're not for residents, right? 
that I think Reyes was written that they were all yes, residents. They are spaces. all for the residents. Yeah. Yeah. They're but all they may not the residents may not need them all. So if there's a surplus they'll use them for the retailers. And that's kosher by the one point two five standard. Because it's well, they're providing the space. It's yeah, one point two five for units. The, the plan shows that they meet zoning. Right. But okay. in pra again in, in actuality we 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 look and we say, well, pra as a practical matter, that may not be that, that may not be the right size parking. You know, we're guess we're always guessing at right sizing the parking. Right. We may be overestimating. Well, one of the things we're always hoping for, we keep talking about it, is that you know, you've got walkable reading, you've got the train station. Yep. The whole 40 R idea was that you know, the two car family thing doesn't really isn't mandatory uh, anymore. This but is a totally different model. Yeah. But, but it does meet our parking requirement. Yes. Okay. Yes, or it meets zoning. Right? Isn't that what we're One point two five. It meets it's it. It's per unit, but yet those spots aren't necessarily used by the units. It could be used by the right. commercial. But zoning doesn't always it okay. get actual right. It. In okay. fact, it rarely does. So we know there'll be enough, but it could be too much. The the box in the upper left corner, Mark T. What is that? That's the transformer. Oh, I see. Uh, Mark, I'm sorry, I'll just point it out because I'm getting it. I don't understand. This is, this, this is where people walk, right? Correct. Yeah. So they're walking, 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 and then cars are going to pull in here and park there. No, you're park right here. Those, oh, those are plants. These are not cars. Those are tables. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. If there are car cars there, we have a problem. <laughs> I was going to say, I uh, must be missing something. Yeah, we're probably not going to have them up in the stuff. Yeah. yeah, they look like Yeah, them. okay. So right. it's going to parallel now, parking. Now, in Italy, oh, right. we'd have a whole different Yeah, yeah right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they scooters. have much smaller cars. Though. Scooters. Yeah. <laughs> they they look like very small cars compared to the ones there, so I should, that should have probably tipped me off. No, I have to ask this question when people are going to grow. Is, was there an alternate treatment that considered the possibility of, say, taking this section and relocating it over here and thereby being able to put the curb cut farther back down on green, where that doesn't work for some other reason? The main issue with that is if you take away from that retail area, then your retail area starts becoming like six or seven feet in depth. And then you're, it's pretty much useless at that point. The blue doesn't change. This line would stay there, but you simply relocate this assembly down here and then move this entrance up here. So it lets you put this curb cut not 47 feet from the radius, but back even more than 50 feet. Follow what I'm saying? Just take this whole block of stuff and reorient it down here. Move the door over here. Is that tried and abandoned or it doesn't work? or? Uh, if, you, if you park your spaces, your transformer starts Transformer, cheating. believe it or not, drives a lot of this. And that's RMLD. Yeah, you just take the whole thing and slide it down. I'm not leaving the orientation. They, they, they have certain requirements. Yeah, they have certain requirements with the transformer. Yeah, the, there's sky over that. The building sets back like that. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's blue sky there. Yeah. Okay, never mind. That's why. They have to be able to get at that. That's fine. Now I understand. Well, did you point out the outdoor spaces there that, that are not under? Yeah, so the, this area back here, which is toned a little bit differently than the yellow, is uh, parking at grade with sky above you. And, th and that's going to be heated pavement. So so, so you don't have plowing. There's snow no issues removal. losing okay. parking spaces to snow or snow removal issues. Yeah, because you got nowhere to put it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you know that. So, so the building above it is only in the areas marked yellow. Yes. That's right. And then because our zoning setback, we're only going out to here and we step back further as we get higher up. That's uh -huh. it. <coughs> Just the typical second and third floor plans, double loaded corridor units on either side. Here you can see the building starting to step back yeah. further to meet the uh, zoning requirement with the angular setback. And then this is the top floor of the building. At this point now, following the the zoning guidelines we've had to set the building back five feet or every bit of five feet when we get to the fourth floor of the building. So that's what that's showing at this point. And then at the top floor of the roof deck, elevators and stairs um, come up to the roof deck. There's a roof deck that's more heavily weighted to the main street side than towards the residential side of the roof. You say is it roof a real deck. finished deck? I mean, is it actually a place to Are those tables? Room? Yeah. So okay. citizens well, can go up right. there and just rest. Just right. 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 residents. So the residents can grill outside oh, and nice. have a little kind of community. Cool. What's the maximum elevation of the building, including the mechanicals and 
The from a zoning perspective, it's 48 feet high to as zoning measures the height of the roof. I mean, these mechanical units are three feet. It's a condenser that you have in your own backyard. This is by about four and a half feet in that rooftop unit. But it's 48 to the deck. To the deck. Yep. So our zoning is 44, though, right, Gene? They were granted a waiver. Okay. And you won't see the mechanicals. No, oh, that's a bad. They're all no, hidden. That, that's that screen wall. This is Okay. The reason for the waiver for the height, yeah, um, what well, 45 feet, it shrinks your um, your garage quite a bit. So then you start having clearance of about eight six, which starts getting harder to duck in for retail space. Then you also can't really fit anything more than a pickup truck inside your garage, which eliminates you know starts creating more headaches for loading and you know residential move-ins or anything along the lines of that. Emergency vehicle. So a box truck goes in through that garage door. Uh, a smaller box truck. You know, not like a Jordan furniture box truck that won't fit in. Those are, I think, like 13 or 14 feet high. So you have nine foot ceilings then? Uh, we're gonna have more. We're gonna have more like 10 foot six in the garage. We raised the first. We raised the second floor about two feet higher than what you would normally need to do if you were just yeah. trying to satisfy conventional handicap van parking, which is usually yeah, the driver. I want to guess it gives you a, a big, a more open air feel mm -hmm. in the garage. Too. That and the retail has a better presence as well. To make yeah, that higher ceilings. Yeah. <coughs> um, this this is modular construction. You're going to bring any modulars and drop them in place. No, it'll be stick built. Okay. Most likely, we're being, I've looked into modular. Um, it's actually proving not to be any more. Uh, I think modular is Gold Street. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All your all your floor to floor boundaries are single are single joist. You don't have a set of with modular. You end up with right. with separations that are two joists high. You don't yeah, have it's just that. Just an eighteen inch deep truss. Okay, for right. Formula. LBLs. And these are some of the sections that we developed, showing how that applies to the zoning setback at the rear of the property. And here you can see about one story back five feet, which is conformance with the, the zoning code. Or in the distance, you go up to the fourth floor before you cut back five feet and go the rest of the way. These are some of the elevations. This is the elevation on Main Street featuring a lot of brick and cast stone materials, both at the windowsill and at these other accent bands. Um, we've shown something for awnings right now. It's going to really be the subject of where the retailer is and going through that design review process when that comes up. Um, this portion of the building is fiber cement siding that's pushed back. When you get out to the corner, which is again where the retail space is, the coffee shop or whatever it might be, predominantly metal uh, glass with some metal trim pieces here and more fiber cement, just a higher grade of fiber cement in that zone. When you say fiber cement, you mean like hardy board? Yeah. And I've never heard the term cast stone, so you're talking about concrete pavers and... Or uh, yeah, you see it a lot on um, window sill. It's, to say it's cast in place concrete is a little... Oh, it's, it's not in that place. Rough. It's, in no, place. It, it's not that rough. It's fabricated off-site. Okay. Right here it's got yeah. like a buff colored finish got or it. a gray finish to it. Um, it's more ornamental than what you would do if you just went cast on site. And these are some of the elevations at the rear of the building, which you very seldom see. And this is the elevation against the tire. The, the tire building is um, right about there, so you really won't see too much of that. And we took some of the inspiration for some of the brick detailing um, mm. from up the street, which is a great building. And these are some of the detailing of different okay. colors of brick. And this is the, the cast stone base. So the idea is that it blends in with the rest of, or at least part of Main Street. Yeah, it sort of sets the, it kind of book in a little bit to Main Street mm -hmm. development that's happened here, so it sets this tone for what we have. Well, it, 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 tie, it ties that section of Main Street to the downtown, yeah. which currently it doesn't. Yeah, it's an homage to the M.F. Charles School. Mm -hmm. Homage. And that was the rendering that we had done uh, during the Planning board review showing a view from across the street looking back towards the building. This being the residential entrance, and these would be the retail zones there. Thank you. So, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I sure. maybe move on to the, uh, I guess, the main purpose of us appearing before your board Please. tonight. Um, the CPD, CPDC, after seeking comment and consultation uh, from other town boards and town officials through the development process with the town, which, by the way, was extremely efficient, just so you know, everyone that we work with, we appreciate that very much. Glad to hear that. Um, including the Reading Parking and Traffic Transportation Task Force. They included, the CPDC did, including three requirements or conditions uh, in a decision necessitating your board's consideration in an approval. 
Uh, the first is the fact that the entrance to the garage for the project off of Green Street, as we've already discussed, uh, is going to be 43.7 feet from the Main Street intersection. And in the, in the letter correspondence that I had sent to you prior to this meeting, I think I referred to it as 46 feet. When we did the exact calculation, it's 43.7 feet. Uh, and I talked to uh, uh, the head of your uh, planning department, Julie University of Tech. She's aware of that. We had that discussion, but that's the exact figure. And she's on board with that. Um, it is less than the preferred 50 feet pursuant to your policies. Um, so we're seeking your approval on that. Um, in, in doing so, I'd like to point out that, uh, as was mentioned, it's important to note that as initially proposed, the project had entrances to the garage off of Main Street. And pursuant to the request of your planning department, the uh, parking uh, task force and mm -hmm. traffic task force, they asked us to move that to Green Street, which we did because of constraints with the property line, the frontage on Green yep. Street, we basically in the ability to put it back uh, as far as we can. And, and it's also important to note that although we were asked by the planning department and engineering department to do that, it was supported by the CPD <coughs> that change uh, throughout the planning process. Um, the, uh, the traffic task force, and I, I won't go through the whole name, I'll just refer to it as a traffic task force. I'm going to jumble my words. Thank God. Uh, the Ready Traffic Task Force recognized that full compliance with the design um, preference was not possible. So we, to meet the 50 feet wasn't possible because the site frontage on Green Street was limited. And they further determined um, through their review process that the requested deviation that we're asking for um, is the minimus and would uh, not negatively impact the site function. So that is the first item that we're seeking um, for. Um, would you like me to go on to the next two, Mr. Chair? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, the second one is that the CBDC decision requires that my client request permission from your board of selectment for outdoor seating related to the project at the sidewalk level. Um, off the commercial space. Um, Julie, can you maybe go back to that because there's a little bit of confusion under that. Oh, do you want the plan? Yeah, if you want mine. Thank you. Um, the plans that you guys brought tonight on the thumb drive or? Um, yeah, it was one, really just kind of the front where it shows the parking spaces. Like slide it's two. the ones that Andy slide two. the cars. Yeah. yeah, the ones with the cars and the sidewalks. Yes, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, this one. Um, back up now. Yeah, back up. Although you can see it there. Down in the end? Down that, yeah, the yeah. kind of red awning. Okay. There, oh, one of them. Right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So okay. the outdoor seating is right here. Just a few tables. There's enough room in the sidewalk area to accommodate that. Um, as we've talked about, this 2,500 uh, square feet of retail. Um, the CPTC anticipated, as my client does, that one of the tenants for the commercial space may be a dining or food service type establishment. Uh, in, the, in the event that that occurs, uh, we're seeking permission for your board to provide outdoor seating on the sidewalk at the street level of that commercial space. The um, tra transpo traffic transportation task force was supportive of this request, recognizing that the sidewalk is wide enough in that area uh, to, accommodate, to accommodate it. Um, and we also recognize, and it was pointed out to us, that notwithstanding the fact that your board might approve this, that any um, final occupant that was going to seek seating out there would also need to apply for obtain an outdoor dining license mm -hmm. um, from your board pursuant to your policy number 3.10. Yep. So, but the CPDC just wants to make sure that in general you're in agreement, um, but obviously there'd have to be further approvals depending on who goes in there. Yeah. So that was number two, Keep going. Mr. Chair. And the final um, condition, the CBDC required that my client request permission from the board to provide up to three 8 by 20 parallel parking spaces along Main Street for use as short-term parking indoor retail loading and unloading. Um, so those are the three that I had just asked about. Those okay. are the three, correct. And as we mentioned, um, they will be installed entirely at my client's expense, no expense to the town to do that work and to adjust the sidewalk uh, to allow those to uh, go in. And then they, once they were uh, installed, they would be regulated as the town of Reading, you know, with seats fit. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like we would do say those are the spaces. They become, they become uh, parking space, public parking spaces. The site frontage, as been discussed, has two curb cuts on Main Street that will be entirely closed uh, that will accommodate this, and I think will work nice with the project. 
think it will be advantageous to the project, to the commercial space, and to the whole downtown Reading area to provide additional parking and we will do so. Um, so those are the three items. Okay, thank you. CBDC in their decision requiring that we come okay. up with CBDC. I'd like to propose we take these in the reverse order. Um, question for Jean. The current Sunoco station has, a, at the moment, how many parking spots out on the street? I know maybe that's zero. hard to know. Zero? zero. No. Is, is, on, is it zero? There's zero. Yeah. I thought it was by the gas pumps you could put one car. Nope. I'm trying to figure out, is, is this a net of three or a net of On the property. But it's a net of three. Net of three, three no. becomes right. the only three. Then that's yeah. easy. It's three more than we had before. Yeah. Yeah. So is any, any reason the board wants to talk about the third topic? Any, okay. On the second topic, Bob, the question I have for you is we normally, when we grant outdoor seating, ask for a, a site plan of the actual seating, mm -hmm. what it will be, the dimensions, the distances. What um, what possible uh, agreement could we make tonight that yeah. we could see that? Well, you can't do anything tonight, first of all, um, yeah. as I mentioned earlier. Uh, yes, I get that. Yeah. But we'll have to figure out what motion. You know, the board is uh, receptive to outdoor dining or something like that because you're yeah. not approving a plan. With appropriate Correct. regulation on right. the previous, you know, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. You could end up with uh, somebody that, you know, one tenant that needs no outdoor dining, too. Mm -hmm. I, I think what you're, what I think I'm hearing you want is kind of the interest that says we're open to this if the right establishment is there and then they yeah. come in and yeah. I think we'll be, uh, we'll be with Mark. I don't know how you actually yeah. put that together. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's the problem. You can't grant it. Yeah. We can't vote on it. But we've done it in other locations, but it's situational. I mean, is there alcohol yeah. involved? Yeah. Is there not? Yeah. What's the nature of the service? Is it gated? Is, is there a fence? Well, we have others, yeah. for example, you know, on Main Street where we have mm -hmm. a, yes. a small yeah. row. The Amici's right across the street. Yeah. The yeah. Does does the only yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Portland Pie had it down the, the, the yogurt place had it yeah. too. Yeah, really yeah but yeah. currently they're the only one. Yeah, yeah, at the moment. So there's a precedence for it. Yeah, there is. And I, I think we'd be open to it, but it depends on the particulars on the ground at the time. So I wouldn't want to say anything that would commit us, but I think you, the general sense is, you know, why not? It adds to the ambiance. Well, we're not, you know, once we got to hear the the way the motion gets worded, yeah. Anyway, yeah. which yeah. is going to be some kind of a magical out. thing. Plus, well, the condition that we're complying with that might help you. The, our condition from the CBDC was the applicant, that being us, shall request permission from the board of selectmen, and if approved, up to a seating will be provided at the sidewalk level of the commercial space. Right. So you have to come to us. Right. Well, the problem there is the will. Right. The yeah. problem there is the will, right. and the. W yeah. We can't give you the will without a particular yeah. plan. No, so I mean, what, what my thought would be, respectfully, would be that you would, you would, you know, even a vote that you're inclined to allow it, but it's subject to yeah. a condition yeah. upon yeah. proper application yeah. by the yeah. eventual occupant by the tenant. that would still have to be approved by your board. Okay, so you would accept the motion that we would entertain the proposal if yes. it were made? Yes, okay. I think that that would be absolutely So we need a motion for three, a motion for two, and then the motion on one, I, I have a question. If we go back to that. I'm sorry, anyone else want to talk about number two? No, I'm good with two. I, I have a, sure. just a historical question, which yeah. I, um, is there a reticence to have outdoor seating along Main Street? Or there, no, or no, not at all. But no. it depends on the nature of the establishment. Do they serve alcohol? Do they not? Um, how many seats are there? Can they walk by? Is it big enough? Is I mean, it clear? You know, yeah, yeah. Some, you know this pretty much just common sense kind of. Sure. You know, None of them are different. Sense. All of them are different because the stores are different, the sidewalks are different, right. some of them have trees, some of them don't. Yeah. That kind of thing. Okay. All right. Um, on the last one, it strikes me that the 50 foot is probably more important for cars exiting the garage than it is for cars entering the garage. Because of where you put the door, you're always guaranteed to be able to have uh, ingress into the garage from a car enter, uh, coming from Green Street, right? Well, yeah. you'll, all be able to, you'll always be able to pull into the garage because you'll have that. So a car, a car coming from here will always be able to pull right in because that's going to be vacant 100% of the Presuming time. Presuming there's no queue. Presuming there's no queue, but uh, generally. It's less likely to be that, a queue. That was our original thought by pushing that right. back is that a lot of four cars to get right. the additional time. If you're coming up Green Street, we've heard it's very traffic. So yes. you want to sit there with the garage door open and right. delay more traffic. Um, and I get the ability to pull in there. Right. Uh, which buys you more time, and as you're pulling out, the same thing. You don't have to rush out onto Green Street. Correct. And, you know, wake up. But what, I'm, I'm trying to help you here. So the one thought is this dimension here to, the, to this edge, I actually believe it's more critical that it be this exit because that's the case where you're going to have queuing here. It's the exiting car that's going to be more impacted. And therefore, in my own mind, I kind of think it's the 50-foot requirement, not going to the entrance, but rather to the exit. So in my mind, you've actually achieved it in a different way. 
Yeah. Maybe not by the letter law, but, but for the intent of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. They're going to take you on the road with them. <laughs> <laughs> they better hurry up. <laughs> so I, I can see a way around this because I think it's actually clever. And moving the door back in actually helps quite a bit as well. So um, I've occupied all this time. What are the other thoughts of the board? I have one major question. Yeah. So, Ray. I'm going to ask you exactly what I asked the last owner of this property. Who's going to fix my car? <laughs> <laughs> King's Complete is down the street. Yeah, King, I, I know. We have a lot of good mechanics, but I'm only kidding. Kings are, you know, this is, this is a long-standing business in town and with a great reputation. And, um, so, and I do know the property very well. Uh, the, the old fleet of my cars are in and out of there all the time. Um, okay. yeah, the there, they're, yep. very nice. they're, they're great guys. So do we have motions prepared already? No. No, that's no. next. Okay. Next meeting. No. All right. So next we meeting. can't do that because we didn't have a no public hearing. hearing. You, you want a sense of the board now. that uh, no. we're amenable you don't to really pursue? You don't need that. No. no. I, yeah. I think they got a sense of it, though. Yeah, you've heard us talk. You've heard the logic. I think I can I can wrap my head around 50 feet. I get the the parking yeah. spots and I think the outdoor seating is yeah. fine. The, uh, yeah, the, the small changes senior are... consensus yeah. developer. This yeah. is what we, you know, we've been hoping for this. This is what we, you know, this is the kinds of projects where yeah. we've got, you know, what 40R is all about. Um, yeah. Back on the, sorry, back on the 48 feet, where's the, uh, you have four stories? So it's, four so it's 12 foot per story or do you have, is it asymmetric as you go up? Yeah, the, the residential floor is about 11 foot floor floor and the ground floor it's all down is 14-ish. Yeah. And okay. the top floor is a little bit more. So if I'm standing across the street at the chocolate shop, I think it's really across yeah. the street. Aaron's place. And I look up, is right across the street. and I look up, what do I see? Do, I, I don't see four floors, do I? Well, you will from that vantage point, yeah. you'll be able to see them all. Because it's directly across the street, right? The right. chocolate shop. Right. Yeah. yeah, so you'll be seeing, you'll almost be seeing the elevation of the building at that point because you're looking at it head on. So if you go to the <coughs> hallway elevation, you'll see it. I don't know. This is the oh, other one. No, go back up. Two, one more. Yeah. You're kind of seeing okay. that for the most part. But if I'm standing at the front end of the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing the. Um, you stand on the sidewalk in front of it, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're not. I mean, it, it, it is step back. So, I mean, you know, it, it's. Yeah, you're really seeing, I mean, technically. Is it five feet? How much is the setback? It's about five and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was more. Okay. So, all right. So. One question on the um, heated floor. If we get one of these New England, you know, two foot deposits, is that Canada? Yes. It's, uh, it's actually designed way up in Canada. And you told me that you see snow falls that you'll never see. Is this steam or glycol? No. So what it is, it's uh, electric. It's okay. got these coils they stick in basically like sheetrock. Okay. And you lay them down and you put, uh, okay. you lay it down on sand, but you know, well, two or three inches of sand, you put two or three inches of sand on top of it. Yeah. And then it, you know, connects right to our transformer. Just let it go. And then you let it go. Well, it heats up to, uh, I think it heats up to like 100, 120 degrees underneath the slab. Bring the slab up. Hmm. And it's yeah. all on a sensor as well. So a certain cool. moisture level, certain <laughs> <laughs> and it drains properly and it doesn't free like you know oh so I've asked them it's a lifetime warranty on it because of the sand there any kind of crack drain like that it won't allow anything into the system um, okay. it's fine it's it's all coil based so you know all everything in it can bend so it's not going to snap or break and all that drain with melted snow yeah, will just a, fall into the the the, 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 set, the, the various uh, cash bases that we have okay. yeah. because of the raining and this floor of the garage is that great you're not depressing it at all correct is that okay. So you'll you'll there'll be catch basins up yeah. on the oh, exterior sure. parking, mm -hmm. and the yeah, it's got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's spot drains inside the garage under the. Yep. And these oil separators in there as well. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Looks good, guys. It does look good. Go do it. So next question: um, Where are you in the you know basically financing groundbreaking process? When do we expect to shovel in the ground? Uh, we're we're hoping in July August. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be a big hurdle ahead of us getting the plans right. Okay. Um, make sure it's going to be developed Okay. So, Bob, when will they be back in front of us to take care of these three little items? Right. Next meeting. Yeah, um, April. April 17th. Okay. Before we move off, any questions from the public? David, any questions? Just one question. Just tell us who you are for the cameras at home. David Cannon, 30 Beach Street. Um, I heard you mention uh, on the rooftop deck uh, something about grilling. Yes. So uh, is that approved by the fire department? Uh, everything has to be reviewed by the fire department, but what it is, it's um, hard cut up to the roof. Mm -hmm. And the gas line that comes right from the to the roof. And then it's usually take the grill on the hot top timer. Okay. So they'll have to turn the hot top timer on 
Uh, but it's all subject to the <laughs> and nothing other balconies that on the back side of the building. There are balconies on the rear end. Oh, yeah, no, the tenants won't be able to do any grilling. No, no, no. no, no. I, you're not allowed you're not to grill unless you have a uh, stairwell to the ground. Right. Um, so that's why we'll, we do the grill on top that are, you know, sort of I think you have to be hard pipe for that, yeah. too. These are permanent grills. Uh, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Like a home depot grill. Yeah, no, you really no, can't no, go out on one of those. Special grade grills that are hard pipe. Grill. Um, and they're, they're concreted in kind of thing, or no? They're yes, you know, no one's going to pick them up and walk okay. away. Right. And it's all subject to it being, if it's right. a okay. <coughs> You're not dragging up your own propane can. <laughs> no, 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 Definitely not. We, we, no, you see the lot of, no, a lot of institutional. I, I do think that that's the, this hard piping is what I think is the thing that turns the trick. Otherwise, yeah. you can't do it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. no, exactly. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, hauling propane, it's... Yeah, the fire departments kind of go crazy as they should. You don't want to update it now. It's dangerous. Huge risk of liability. How are you going to sh stupid question? How do you shovel off the roof? Or no, that's not an issue. Turn on I the shut down during the winter. Okay. Yeah. And I and I forgot from the CPDC hearing. So are you going to have on-site management or? Uh, so I'm no. discussing with a couple of apartment companies right now, um, looking into using a state property management company as. 24 pool as well as 30 acres. And so it wouldn't be on site, but they would be in the area. Okay. They, would, they would hire and, you know, community staff. Okay. Right. Any other questions from the public? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Should we expect it to be at the next meeting? Is there a meeting? <coughs> um, Sounds like we have room. There's room, but this is, it's up to you whether you need to see them again. Yeah, should we attend this one? Oh, you can always attend. You can always attend, but you look at the chain. <laughs> when will we have the motions prepared? What's that? You need, you need a hearing, right? Well, I, I think that's a fair question. Do they, yeah. do you do want they does the team yeah. need to be here to answer questions, or do we have some adequate information? We would just need someone to present the more detailed plan about the, the public. Outdoor the public, the public will be here, yeah. and yeah. it may be in your up. best interest to. Yeah, I would. I just think it would be in your best interest to have your team. Glad I asked. We're not trying to, you know. I would leave it to the register on you, but you know, I would leave it to the town manager to pick a suitable evening to come back. You know, either the next meeting or the meeting following. Um, yeah. We'll get a public hearing noticed and uh, have you guys back in and the, the open to the public. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah. <coughs> All right, guys, we're going to finish strong here. Okay. Um, uh, move the board of selectmen approve the change of DBA for an annual all alcoholic beverages restaurant license for Ristorante Pavarotti at 601 Main Street, Reading, Mass. You know, you always choke up about this time of the night. I know. <laughs> it's just so nostalgic. Uh, we have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Second. Berman <coughs> seconds. This is a regular and ordinary. Uh, What's, is it, are they getting a change of manager or change? Name. 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 Yeah. name to what? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Even say it in the we, have, we kind of have to know that, don't we? Yeah, it's in there. We'll yeah, that was it. Yeah, I remember. It was Good night. Italian name. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Joe's Bar and Grill. No, it was another no. Italian it's name. Mama's Cafe. Yeah. No, I've been in the wrong Boston place. Boston Foods, DBA. No, nope. as I remember, the, 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 the new owners oh, are not Zuka. Italian. Zuka, Zuka Italian. Zuka Italian. 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 Zuka Italian. All right, I'm going to incorporate that in the, mo the motion. Yeah. Is a secondary grill. A Zuka? Zuka. Z U C C A. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? I Over. just have a, sure. uh, a question. I, I, I don't know if you know this, Dan, um, but this restaurant had a, uh, had violated. I remember um, that, yeah. Yeah, so have they corrected that problem? Is that in our purview? No, I have no idea. I haven't heard. I haven't heard of. I've heard not heard of, of subsequent help, but I don't know. It, has it, come it up. was an outstanding yeah. uh, grease problem from a right, vent fan right. on the outside, and and uh, I'd like to see that resolved if it hasn't been resolved yet. Yep, that's our, for our brother board. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Five zero. We would go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. And the chair declares that an open meeting may have a de detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and not to reconvene in open session. This is a roll call vote? Yes. Um, John Halsey? Yes. Dan Enzimate? Yes. John Arena? Yes. Barry Berman? Yes. 
Andy Friedman. Yes. We are... Fade to black. Yeah, we are in recess. <laughs> Moving to executive session.